are live. Alive, baby. Speaking of being live, <clears throat> go ahead and do a proper roll call. Phoenix, Emra, Lewis, Judith, Sarah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cue the intro. Uh, you guys can talk or whatever because you'll be muted, but. May or may not have caught that. All right, we're back for another lovely game. All these <laughs> loving people watching. Uh, let's see. Who would like to do a recap to get us ready and in the mind for today's show? I can I'll do it. Have one. Boy. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> Judith dictates as she packs for her next journey. Her magical quill dances with the flames behind the fire from the fireplace. Time is running out. We have nine months until Palm, a rune warrior turned world villain, returns with her army of mouthers to destroy our lands. Zion's hope, Zion hope, uh, blah, blah. Zion's hope's new class of warriors have been training for this moment. But when the pressure is on, do they have the grit? They are being sent on a mission to one of several ancient burial sites to close portals that Palm has created. And each burial site will have at least one very powerful Malder that will test our up and coming heroes. Let's hope that all their training wasn't in vain, but more importantly, let's hope that they can remain strong together. That will be the only way that they can succeed. Judith pauses for a moment and thinks the story continues to grow and grow so many plot lines going in different directions she thinks back to the moment they were told of this threat she found it so strange that everyone took a long time to volunteer for this mission are they doubting themselves are they doubting the group just a curious thing but breaking her out of her thought a small tap is heard from the quill on the paper ah continuing after a three-month period of relative peace, we found out some great information. Louis Noel is, is in fact the same face. Oh, blah blah. Sorry. Uh, Louis Noel is in fact the same Louis who laid the final blow onto the god dragon Tyrantrum many years ago. Who he thought was just a regular old man is actually a war hero. Unfortunately for him, his deadly strike has made him a mark. The soul of Tyrantrum has returned and everyone around Lewis are now in constant danger. Sora's actual brother, a monkey person named Dondo, has joined the cause. Along with the dragon eternal Mello, Sora's family can, seems to continue to grow every day. Something someone like her truthfully deserves. Along with Dondo, there was uh, the other first half of the... Blah. Along with Dondo, the other half of the first New Year's have safely returned and have leveled up as they say they look more battle tested and ready to go they also have a new recruit with them named nikita um many eyes were drawn to her and i look forward to seeing what she can bring to the cause 
Uh, in Goblin, Judith says, thank you. And the quill stops writing. She continues to pack while Austin thought she thinks of her between the flames co-workers, Joe and Eva. Joe lost his life, but Eva was able to bring back the information that a pink skin clone of Amrut is alive and working with the Nipe chapter. What Amrut says is true, and why wouldn't it be? His old group has been cloning him, but for what purpose? We truly don't know yet. With Phoenix, she's still keeping things close to her chest. She has a history of bad dreams, and that's all I really know for now, but maybe there's something there. Judith will continue to pack, and she'll pick up all the scrolls that Apollo gave her and put them in their corresponding uh, scroll cases that she has with her, and knows that it's going to be tough, but there's a lot of it's going to be there's a lot to learn out there that she can still be helpful for the team. Her bag is perfectly packed and sitting on her well-made bed as she goes outside to check on the others. There we go. All right, awesome. A D2 plus one. A D2. Okay. Slash R space 1D2. Oh, oh, sweet. So that's two? Yep. All right. Okay. All right, thank you all for joining me for another session of Phantoms of the Past. We ended last week while closing out of the meeting, accepting to go to one of these burial sites. To sure to test us all to our limits, maybe beyond them. There's chatter in the main hall as uh, we're exposed to the threat proper. But other than that, eventually the meeting will come to a close if everyone issued to leave almost immediately. While you're able to hang around in the hall where they usually serve food and other beverages on top of these conversations, you have a moment to yourselves to truly discuss the weight of the situation as the meeting would conclude, but people would linger. Anyone want to jump in first? No, I'm perfectly happy with sending us back to our home of Supreme. Anybody? Be honest, I'm waiting for you to talk to Nikita. I'm doing it alone. Figure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm okay. All right, so I'll send you guys back to Supreme, where you can talk some of yourselves about what's what's next. Uh, first floor, second floor, folks. You know, I don't mind. Second for me. Second floor, then. Let's everybody in the second. Second sounds good. One minor thing to develop with all the threat and danger that has been occurring. Uh, they have decided to move the students into the right side of the, this facility. So you would see them moving in. You could question them and gather as much. They said, sorry that they knew it was your reward, but they'll come up with a way to make up for it. For now, for the safety of all students, this place is the best place to keep everyone. You guys can engage each other however you wish. Let me go ahead and get the other classmen in. Say so Phoenix is just going to go right to her work, making whatever trinkets she can make. She's still working on those night vision goggles for Sora and just trying to make Jenkins the best he can be because she wasn't 100% gung-ho about this mission so that's how she deals with her nervousness i'm gonna go to judas room i'm gonna knock on your door real quick okay wait hold on Fuck. 
Oh, uh, Jesus. Uh, Judith. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, and I'll, I'll go. You'll see. It's like the beginnings of me packing, and but uh, uh, yeah, what's what's going on? There's something I had to tell everyone, but uh, can you have everyone meet in the um, I don't know, like the library in like an hour or so? What am I, your damn secretary? Just tell everybody. We have to have, maybe we have like should have like a way to communicate with everybody. Hold on a second. Wait, I do. I I can do that. <laughs> you you can do that. Yeah, I can. I forgot because I I don't use it too much, but it makes sense. Uh, Judith will just uh, start pointing in the direction of everyone's rooms, <clears throat> casting message and saying, uh, "Emmert needs to go to meet us all in the library for something very important." In like and an hour. Looks, uh, in an hour, he seems really stressed about it. Okay, there you go. Thanks. Sorry for the trouble. No, you'll no, I... Res- you'll get a response back. Can I bring Dondo? Mm, can Sora bring Dondo? Hammond? No. Uh, I'll just point back. No. Oh. Now, to touch, not, to sounds, touch on this real quick, scary. I don't mind you using it like this in your home, but normally it wouldn't work like this. Because an, a single inch of stone blocks it, and this literally stone walls oh, everywhere. Oh, okay. Okay. But but I don't mind it inside the facility using. It. No, it's okay. We can say. I don't know. Let's. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll say sure. Again, I think it's fine okay. here, but I want you to get the expectations. It always works like that later. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure thing. <clears throat> All right. I'll All right. Be back. Uh, where are you where are you going? I have to talk to a couple people. There might be a lead on whatever's whatever the fuck's going on. Maybe. Can I come? I mean you said you said my favorite word, which is a lead, so you know shit. I should have fucking lied. Come on. Okay. I will go and follow Hamlet. All right. So while you're walking to your destination, so are you walking in the room and you see Daniel's jumping on your bed? I'd I'd love to do that too, but it's so spongy. Not Um, like what I was used to. You tell me they gave you this place because you worked hard and earned it. They just gave it to us for free. Ha <laughs> ha! He's jumping. Yeah, I had to go down into um, the mouth that feeds of all places. This is something about being safe, but it's bullshit. I don't oh, need yes. anyone to protect me. I just believe the word safe is uh, non-existent these days. Sure, How do you do. feel about your new team, Dondo? All of them are cool, but they're all weaker than me, of course. Hmm. Uh, just so you know, the feathered one is Quill. Although he's told me to call him Naruto. We sometimes yell our names at each other. It's quite fun. And she'd go up to the door, unaware that Amrut is standing out there. She'd throw it open and just yell at the top of her lungs, Naruto! What? Sometimes he yells it back. Give it a second. This is the deal here, nothing. Ah, uh, why is he no fun? Uh, so I would knock on the door. They would open the door quickly. You see, Quill's like, that was you calling to me. I'm not Naruto anymore. Now that I've upgraded, I need a cooler name. Like, I don't know. Call me, call me Sasuke. Okay, Sasuke and Sasquatch? Yeah, double S's. You know, that could work. Anyways, what do you want? I'm just happy to see you both back. I was worried there for you all. Yeah, we stumbled upon a burial site already. It was quite the fight for our lives. 
everyone put in a whole bunch of work, even Creed. He ran around screaming and crying. He would, what did people say nowadays? Pull the enemy away from the rest of them. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah, I came over to ask you guys how that all went. You got a couple of two new members, right? What's up with them? Bill jumps onto the chair. Now she goes, well, Dondo's right there behind you, and he's quite energetic. Keep the more silent talks. It's comforting, though. She's quite skilled. Now, for her and a few other people that came to our aid, we probably all would have perished in your sight. Hmm. Well, you just, like, find her out there, or? When we are engaging a creature, which is known as a Malder, she came out of nowhere and started cutting into it, right when we were on our last limb, and our master, fortunately disabled. The creature we fought was some type of centipede demon that could paralyze you. If she hadn't came in at the nick of time and was able to administer proper alchemical skills to unparalyze us, well, then we surely would have died. So I don't know much about her, but I know I approve. Oh, shit. Well, I'm glad you guys made it back all right. Hmm? Y'all did well enough, though Creed seems to not have developed an inch. Maybe I'm sure you guys will whip him into shape. Certainly. So you said Creed's developed a what? He hasn't developed an inch, as in, hasn't made any improvement. Hmm. Okay. What were you thinking? I thought, I thought he, I thought he said itch. I was like, man, he needs to go to the doctor or something. <laughs> I'm sure he has those too. Though he seemed to be the only one who somewhat knew Nikita, which I thought was strange, but I don't really engage Creed that much. Care to dig deeper. Or at least uh, Amru, but doesn't say anything. He knew Nikita. Wonder, wonder from where. I would wonder, but I'm just happy to be alive. Not to mention, I feel stronger, as though I've developed my room further in myself. That's important for who we are and what we must do in the future. Be the best we can. I feel like gods. Copied so much mimicry, I can speak no. Gotcha. All right. Well, glad you guys are back. We'll see you guys later. Huh. Could you imagine if I was there? I would have beat the bricks off of that sentity. <laughs> I'm going to go back to jumping on the bed. All right. You have fun, Dondo. I have a team meeting to get to. I'll be back later. Oh, the hey. meeting's a little later, actually. Bring me a banana dipped in chocolate, would you? Yeah, I'll go see if I can fetch one from downstairs. Make sure it's not poop. I made that mistake once and I'm still ruling the day. I will be sure it is not um, having any side of feces, Dondo. Would you like ice cream? Nobody wants ice cream with bananas. It's crazy. I think I will have you have a discovery later, but alas, I should go. All right. Uh, we'll catch up in a bit, Sora. Okay. I should probably um, actually go see if they even have ice cream today. Excuse me. Sure. And while you guys head to the next location, Phoenix, what are you doing over there? Tinkering. Just tinkering away on Jenkins, nothing else? Yeah. And Lewis? Lois is just keeping it simple, just going through his uh, usual routine of uh, swing his blade and just trying to get used to his form again. Understood. You haven't had any visits from the shadowy dragon yet either, which is good. Yep, and he's been in a rather good mood for one reason or another as a result, whether he's realized it or not. Awesome. 
Well, I'm running Judith at this point in time. You, you would come next to the door. I'm assuming you haven't knocked him. Maybe in a brief Judith or whatever you plan yeah. on doing. But... All right, let's think... greet the new girl. Look at that. Why are you you're being very uh, welcoming? A little more than usual. But uh, yeah, of course, I'm happy to meet them. It's like I like, get to the door. Um, you like turn back to Judith. Listen, remember what I said about oxidizers? Yeah, of course. Well, guess what she is? <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, that's why Crete knows her as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Judith will, like, pull her hair back into like a like a ponytail kind of a thing like all right business yeah get ready get your notepad out just know that i'm only here because i don't know if we can trust her or not i don't know why she, the fuck she's here well fuck i wish i would have taken zone of truth that spelled but yeah no you got it yeah that's why i asked sasha first just to make sure popped out of nowhere i don't like that but anyway no. Um, yeah, then, okay. Lead the way. Shit, hold on. Where's the knock? Fuck. <laughs> uh, you open the door. Just like you remember them. Can I help you? This Creed. Uh, what's up, oh. Creed? What's going on? I don't know. You came up to my room. What's going on, bro? Is that kid in here? No. He's the room behind you. All right. Just trying to meet her. Um, actually, you know what? We're curious. Mainly about you, Creep. Yeah, I'm the one that finished off the Mouther. They won't admit it. It was me that did it. <laughs> it's safe to not use any of your resources because you're busy running away crying. I mean, tactically retreating. I'm glad you made it back, but how, how come you don't have all the fancy new gear and stuff like that? <laughs> you think I don't, but you haven't seen the pair of underwear as I have now, have you? Um, nope, and... Don't plan on seeing them either. Thank you, Creed. I've got a set of 12. They took all the stuff that they thought was nice and that they deserved. 12 underwear to replace one ruined on that adventure. Tell me, Creed. Have you heard of the... What are they called? Uh... The evening phrase, um... Shit. The daylight verse. Uh, oh wait, that, doesn't it have something to do with like a what was that like a like a book? Yeah, uh, the what night chapter. That? Oh, well, um, no, absolutely not. Anyways, I just remembered I have to change my underwear, so I'll talk to you later. That's to close the door. He like puts his foot in the, uh, at the door. Oh no, I really should have taken one of those other items. What do you wait, want? Well, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean, Creed? As I say, as I get closer, I... Why are you so nervous now? I just remembered something, that if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I will lose what makes me beautiful. Look at my skin, it's fair. I mean, hey, I hear you there, but at the same time, it's in the middle of the day, isn't it? It is. Uh, well, beauty sleep is can be taken at any time of the day. At a late night. Uh, oh shit, what's that behind you? Huh? What? You know, like, he'll like kick him like into the uh, room. He just door bust open. He, he rolls onto the, the thing and he, he rolls so dramatically that he like gets up like he's a bad actor and just keeps rolling to the back of the room. Close the door. <laughs> Just keeps rolling for some reason. I'll, I'll, I'll step in and I'll close the door, but I'll stay close to it. All 
All right. Now, Creed. Yes, Emrut's a friend of mine who brought me a drink a few months ago, who had never hurt me. What can I do for you? That depends on what you're going to say next. The night chapter. What do you know? Never heard of them. Is that a book that Phoenix, I see she likes her books and from the from the library, is that a book that she purchased? If you didn't like, know, then the floor wouldn't be wet right now. Oh no, he saw. Even with the Creed. absorbent rug, I still have to let loose. Creed, you should just say what you know without making things difficult, okay? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. You're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe. Um, I, I I try to go to the night chapter. That, that, that's the cultist I was talking about. They said I wasn't good enough, but they're fools. I I recognized. Uh. I, uh, I I I didn't recognize anyone, but. I, I, I'm familiar with the night chapter, yes. Cut the bullshit. Bye. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> what? Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, uh, Creed? I, I suggest I suggest that you stop crying and trust us. We're only here to help you, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, what is it in, in wisdom? Okay. Creed Kata. I gotta show you guys the artwork I, I passed up when I realized that he didn't need an upgrade. It was good. Uh, you see him and oh, hold on a second. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, he technically, yeah, he, he passed the save. What? Checking his sheet and he has advantage against spells like this. Oh. Oh, he's an elf? Or no, no, no. He's he's oh shit. Looked twice. He's got his um uh what cultists typically have is devotion. The baby's first ah. cultist ability. Now this isn't the charm condition, which is different. This is against any effects that are relations to charm to frame. So he would he Ooh, would have he's a still sobbing. Yeah, he's still shopping, but I think that because Judith seems less threatening than you, Amrit, because, well, you kind of do walk around looking like an assassin. Uh, not, I'm not saying because she's a woman, you're a man, but because you look like an assassin and she just looks like a reporter taking notes. And she's easier on the eyes. Sorry, man, you're ugly. She, he, she's, he, he stops crying and he looks at Judith. I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. All right, he's all yours. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on, Kree. Here, have a seat over here on on this little couch thing here. Okay. Okay. You're such a nice couch in your room. He forgot it's his room because he's just so panicked. Uh, this this isn't my room, but uh. Okay. So, just you know, what actually is happening? You tried to join the night chapter, and things didn't work out you said that they they didn't accept you stop in the beginning okay great when I was a boy my mom said I'd never amount to anything okay she said no matter how hard I tried I'll never be anyone important when she found out I was a rune warrior she told me I'd be the worst rune warrior there ever was then my father my father beat me senseless all the time. It was a tough way to live. 
So I grew up and you know what I decided? I decided I would go to Zion's Hope, be the best I could be, but only after I was declined by the cultist. The night chapter. And this is where my story begins. I traveled day and night, listening to all kind of bardic tales and music in tavern. I would box and break boxes and flip tables. I was a real badass. Okay, but to a little more, let's go a little more present day. Oh yes, present day. I went back when I was 16 years old to my mom's house. And, no, I, no, no. And, I, and I and I used my my rune powers to blow up a couch. Um, Creed, I'm gonna be honest. I need the stuff that involves the night chapter and Nikita, or else I'm gonna tag out with that seething individual. Over no, there. no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> let's 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 get it going. Let's get it going. Okay. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Calm down. Okay. Okay. I'm not scared of nobody, by the way. I just I know you're I, I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm brave. Yeah. Um <clears throat> listen, uh So I went to the night chapter and I asked them to join. Because I couldn't see myself being a rune wife. Just like my mama said. Um The night chapter told me that if I ever showed my face there again, they could kill me. But while I was there, I saw something interesting. Someone that looked like Emrit, someone that looked like the girl in the other room, Nikita. Okay, what did the one that looked like Emrit look like? Was it the same coloration, the same it was handsome dark. flair that he has? It was, it was dark, it was either a strange pinkish color or red. It was pretty dark with it. I don't, I can't see in the dark. Not well at least. And what about the Nikita? Well, uh, she must be a twin of the other girl because she she has no recollection of ever meeting me, and I'm quite the impactful character. Um, the Night Chapter people told me that if I wanted to be a member of Night Chapter, to report on them about all the findings of Zion's Hope. Uh, not that I would ever do something like that. Have you been what? doing that? No, 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 no. Creed? No, no. I, I, I need you to tell me. I told him everything, man. I told him everything. Come <laughs> on, man. Creed. I, I'm sorry. I, listen, we're built different. I'm not. I'm everything my mother said I was. Did you tell them about her co-workers? I, I, I told them that between the flames worked at the facility, but n nothing specific about them. Why? You told them that between the flames worked here? As in, you were in Zion's Hope, but I didn't tell them anything else. Everyone knows, everyone knows between the flames operates out of Zion's Hope. I just said that specifically, that one of the new students is a, a, a very motivated reporter from there. And they told me to be careful because they don't want you snooping in the night chapter. Well, looks like our paths have crossed and... <sighs> hey, uh, Amber, can you have a seat here for a second? No, come on! And I'll what tag, are you doing? I'll tag out. What are you doing? Hello, Amrut. Friend of mine. How you doing, buddy? Just enjoying this comfortable comforter. What I need you to do right now. Actually, Judas, a piece of paper. Sure. Uh, we need you to paper? write down everything you told them. Everything okay. you were planning to tell them. Okay. And he starts writing it down and he goes over some notes that he would write that he didn't have any like very respectable contact there. He was dealing with the bottom feeders and fodders that are at the the lower end of night chapter not talking like the leader directly that'd be insane not even engaging people like nikita and especially not uh the amrit lookalike um he addresses all the things he told them he for example he detailed security for them how uh 
sturdy the location was, how well protected, and up till now that this current location barely had any security before the new events unfold. Um, he detailed your rune capabilities that he learned from the arena competition for those he saw, as well as any other skill sets. He confirmed that you were here, which is probably why you got that letter in the mail soon after. Um, and in general, he's just been taking notes of everything about Zion's Hope, including details on exactly what is taught to you. And then he tells you, see, I didn't tell them much of anything. Nothing important, it is. Okay, well, thank you for being as honest and forthright as you can, as you can be. Um, Judith will kind of come up to him and and I don't know. I know you you have a troubled past, Creed. It's okay. And I know you think that working with this night chapter is going to give you the the credit you deserve or the power or the whatever else you, you feel you need that your mother never gave you. But I'm going to tell you that that's not true. You can get the same actually working here and being a, a proud member of Zion's Hope and becoming a true rune warrior, which I know you can. Um... But you're gonna have to let the the Mystifar, or at least the the head, the heads know what's what's going on. Yeah, they'll expel me. Yeah, well, maybe. But if they, but if they don't, then they'll give you a sec, maybe give you a second chance, and you can become. I don't know. Maybe I'll look to Amrit and be like, maybe we have that. Maybe Creed might be our inside person, low as he may be, but at least be able to give them fake inf fake information. Sure. Yes, I meet with my contact in this very city of Zion's Hope. I don't travel all the way to the night chapter every time. It'd be crazy. And when was the next time you'll meet them? I'm due to meet with them in, at the at the end of the month. We only meet once a month and location always changes. About a week prior, they, they send me a note in the mail and it's hidden messages riddled in it. The first word, middle and last word detail the place to meet at. Everything else is gibberish. Have you told them about Nikita? About Nikita? About about how she's how she just joined. Well, no, because at the end of last month, she she wasn't with us until a few Great. days ago. Let's not tell her tell them about her, okay? And to clarify, that woman in the next room did not remember you, correct? No, she said she's never met me in her life and that I'm not who she thinks she is. Okay. Silly girl. Right. She just probably saw me and was like intimidated by an apex predator. All right. Agreed. Yes? Uh, it tastes like a bottle or something. Here, drink this. Poison! No, I'll tell you anything. I'll tell you anything. It's not poison, but drink it anyway. He's, he's crying while he drinks it, and as he drinks it, he like falls to the ground and starts choking and stuff. And uh, Emma will cast hex on him. Do you feel that? Yeah, something's different about my body. Is this puberty? Don't fuck with us, Creed. Or I will know. You understand me? He would say yes, but he passed out from fear. He's currently unconscious. <sighs> He'll um, take like the sheets and like put it over him. Let's go. I'll take the paper and I will grab. I'll say, uh, uh, Mr. Knight over here. Hello, I'm. Judith would know this person's name. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Gregory. Yeah. Uh, Gregory. I was thinking Gregory. Uh, Gregory, here, do you mind uh, doing a favor? Could you please take um, this uh, this piece of paper and it's it's folded up, um, and Creed to Mystifar, please. Understood. And 
there's if there's any questions i'm happy to come over and help absolutely actually Emma, are you okay or i i can just go and do this sure go on ahead yeah okay i'll, I'll go with you gregory excellent if the information is viral then it's safe to travel together let's be off great and you guys but now we'll come right back to you are you still just fooling around with jenkins is there any new developments with phoenix lewis and sora any of you guys can jump in have a few moments to yourselves before we jump into the nikita thing tim goggles of night seeing what are you are you you're working on them yeah okay you heard um sora is walking back up the stairs and these guards would see in one arm, they have a bundle of bananas. In the other arm, they have like a couple bowls. They're balancing on their arm full of uh, very, I think, like ice cream that she could find. And on top of her head, she's balancing this like brown sauce in a different bowl. And she just smiles to the guards as she walks by. Acrobatics. Oh, oh you got it. Yeah, well, you're balancing them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ooh. A day Beautiful. Like she is walking like there's nothing going on and she like even waves to them while balancing it on the tip of her finger. One of the guards looks the other one. That's impossible. <laughs> you should keep and um she'd eventually get back to her room with her raided supplies and lay them over the uh bedspread for Dondo and then put down this mystery brown sauce and sit down. <gasps> Easily enough, they I just asked for whatever I wanted and they gave it to me. So this is bananas, chocolate, and then what is this other thing? This is the ice cream I told you about. Ice cream. What a strange name. Is it cream or is it ice? Well, apparently it's both. Possible, it's not. It can't be ice and creamy. Cream is soft and ice is hard. Try it and maybe your your mind will be blown. He puts the he 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 splits the banana into the egg, and he puts a little drizzles of chocolate on top of it. Takes a chunk of them both, and he just screams top of his lungs, so much so that Quill thinks you're calling him out, and you hear him just Sasquatch. Hey, it's Sasuke now. Dando looks at you and he goes, Oh, this is cool. But I split in the banana onto the ice cream. Uh, we're going to call it a banana split from now on. Whenever I ask you for a banana split, this is what I want. You got it. I also got this other chocolate sauce I wanted you to try. And she, uh, from behind her back, she pulls out this little uh, ramekin full of this other brown sauce. Except from behind your back, I got worried. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, you pull out the brown sauce and uh, what is it? And they, they call it barbecue sauce. Mm. Barbecue sounds like you'll go great on a banana split. There you go. Oh, pours it on there and eats it. And he, from, it went from the most amazing meal of his life, and he's on the floor screaming, Why have the gods struck me from the sky? And Sora has fallen off the bed and is laughing hysterically. Gotcha. Oh, I see. He stands up and he clutches the covers. He pulls the covers off and wraps himself up like he's royal. He's wearing a cape. The Lord shall never forget this day. Not until all days have passed. Oh, hey, Lord Tondo. May long may he reign. He, uh, he does a skit jumping onto the couch and acting like the bed is a boat. And he's sailing to a new land to get revenge for the barbecue sauce. Forward! Till we smite thy offender. I, I Captain. Um, Dondo, with this mission I'm going on here mo soon. I just want you to know these last few months you've made me very happy. So thank you. I'm, I'm sorry for downing you when we first met. I, most of my life I handled everything with aggression. I'm not smart. I'm not attractive. Even though girls always look at me and they start blushing. That makes you think they're just angry because I get red when I'm angry. I'm not smart. I'm not attractive. All I know is the way of the monkey king. I don't view myself as that smart either. 
look wise I'm not so sure yet. I'll get back to you on that, but Dondo, it does not matter if you think you are any of these things. You are my brother, and that is all that matters. Yeah, that's true. Hey, listen, sir. I've been thinking about it. And I think it's it's time I learn. It's time I say the nice word. I say I'm great. I'm grateful. I'm I'm gangster, motherfucker. And he runs out of the womb and jumps out of the window. They just replaced that again. Uh, I'm going to get mosquito bites throughout the night again. You hear guards chasing you now. Hey, Dano. Ah, you can't catch me, motherfuckers. You think I really can? Yeah. It's way too fast. He's a speedster, honestly. Uh, one day I shall catch up to you, but it is not this day. But that's it for Sora for now. All right, awesome. Any anything else from so Phoenix? If you want to work on your items some more, you can give me another tools check. See how well you're doing. Same thing we did initially. Increase supply, whatever tool. She is freaking not there. It's okay. You're not. You're not getting it now. But every check you make is still a progression. Whether it's one point or five points or whatever system, uh, you are making progression no matter what. It's just taking a little bit longer than you'd like. Mm-hmm. Are they like steampunk goggles? Like, what do they look like? Yeah. No, I was gonna make these different to match Sora more um, to what she already has. Months and months ago, before we even knew about Dondo, I had said that Phoenix did a drawing of the markings on Sora's clothes because that was when Phoenix was thinking she would use them to try to find her family. So they're more like a bandana, like Sora wears around her head, but um, with the lenses in them. So I guess kind of shaped like swimming goggles, but in a bandana type thing so that she could wear them up on her head if she wanted to we'll say what's taking her so freaking long is that she's trying to get the embroidery just right to match what's already on sora's clothing and she's not used to embroidery so we'll say that all right awesome so while you're while you're there with jenkins jenkins is printing out a picture of Amrit. And it looks just like your Amrit too. It's also colored like him, so it's not like extraordinarily deep. But he puts Amrit's name backwards for whatever, whatever reason. Probably just an error of the printing. Okay, I gotta type that out now. Sure. And Lewis, any new developments with you? You just chilling out still before you jump back to Nikita? Lewis, for the most part, is really just practicing. And between each swing, his mind starts to just blank out. Mainly from just exhaustion and sheer amount of focus as he just thinks back to the various visions of that night when they transported. Of that memory that was played before everybody of the fight. Of... Of uh, a certain fox fauna casting spells at that dragon of a rogue acting as a distraction and of a certain cleric that made sure that everybody was fine. Uh, Seeing that specific cleric for a brief moment, he kind of just blinks back to reality and his swing is just a little bit off as he just loses his balance. Then he just hears Dondo just crash through the window outside and just takes a quick look out. I wonder where... Ugh. Don't think about them. Not right now. Focus. Just stay focused. As and Endo, just continues on. As Dondo would zoom by the window when you're looking at it, um, a large shadow is cast above him, like behemoths flying in the sky. When you look up, eventually there's nothing. The hell? Hmm. I'm 
getting a bad feeling. As he just closes the window and uh, continues on with his training. Excellent. Now, Emra. Let's hit that door knock, would you? Oh, that's bad. Anyway. <laughs> Doors open, come inside. I walk out, leave the door open for a hot second. Uh, hey, how's it going? It's going well. As uh, as he looks at her, does he like, is there any type of like recognition in her eyes? Um. Give me an, an inside check, just in case she's being deceptive, but it doesn't necessarily mean she is. Gotcha. Oh, uh, is the modifier for insight different or no? For insight, uh, you did say insight. Still not exactly the highest. It is worse for insight. All right, so anyways, you, you're looking at her, and she just has this blank stare on her face. And she, Can I help you? Uh, and immediately, he just <laughs> he was very bad about the situation, about it, him coming into this room. Um, I was just um, giving you a welcome. Oh, that's really nice of you. None of the other classmates welcomed me at the third years or your other your, or your allies it's nice i'm wondering if i was out of place here what's your name uh it's amrit you see um when you say amrit she just her head falls to the pillow enters a deep sleep He'll uh, close the door and run to her. Hey. And then when her eyes open, they look vicious at the, at the trigger of the name Amrit. She her reach for her blade. Shit, he'll like, um, like grab like the hilt, like, a, like basically like over her hand, like to keep her from like pulling it out. Stop. Uh. Uh, he grabs her head for her, her free hand as you're, as you're tugging at her sheath. Uh, she lets go of the blade. What? I'm not sure what happened there. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's fine. Just, just breathe. That's strange. I'm not usually that aggressive. I'm pretty reserved, you see. I'm not something... It's the changing of the seasons, perhaps. Under the weather, maybe. It's, it's fine. I I make no judgments. You know, people have been through a lot in their past. You're like, um, I, I know you. I'm sorry. I went from assaulting you to claiming a relationship with you. I'm. If this is all too uncomfortable for you, then you have no hostage here. I, she she has all the things that you would have loved about your friend Nikita, how she talks, the nervousness, and how she acts. She uh, moves her hands almost as though she's using sign language to speak with you, but she's just very physical when she talks. Um, even the way she looks at you, it's it's scary how familiar it is. She does look like her in every way, sound like her in every way, but she seems to genuinely not know you. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, let's just talk. I'm sure. Uh, I didn't catch your name before. Um, what was it again? Nikita. That's what I'm called. It's like she's saying it as though she's programmed to understand that her name is Nikita. It was weird how when you asked her that. Yes, Nikita, that's funny. And if you don't mind me asking, um... Where do you hail from? Oh, I hail from the divine. Uh, 
That's a city not too far from here, about a day and a half to travel. Grew up there most of my life, though I don't have many memories of it. Just seemed like your standard plain life. From there, I joined Ophelia's church, and I studied the light blade and pursued the role of a rune warrior. And while I was never accepted into Zion's hope, I saw an opportunity one day when I was traveling to engage a threat. Here we are. Oh, well, congratulations. It's nice. I feel like I'm a part of something bigger, something meaningful. I feel like I was sent here with a purpose and I can't leave this place until that purpose is over. Um, anyways, I think I need to get to one of my classes soon. Uh, we'll just nod. Just don't, don't be a stranger. You could come by anytime you want and talk to me. Just make sure it's not too late. And I don't really do sleepovers with guys I don't know that well. So just don't want you to get the wrong idea. Uh, sure, yeah. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to meet you too, Emrat. Mm. I'm going to leave and close the door. And Judith and Gregory, you guys will be arriving in front of Mr. Far, who is who's downstairs about to take his first bite of lunch. Um, Mr. Far. Uh, mm, yeah. Judith, how are you? Hey, I know we don't get to talk much, but uh, I, Amrit and I discovered something very interesting. Uh, Gregory, thank you very much, sir. Now he bows and walks off. Uh, with Creed passed out and the door closed, I'll say, it looks like we found a, uh, um, well, a, a source in a way. Uh, Creed says he's been working with the night chapter being an informant, and uh, this is what he's wrote down of, tell of everything that he's been telling them. Um, I understand this is probably a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal, but I'm not one to judge somebody else. So I think if it's all right, if maybe we can use him as an as a fake informant that we can maybe like a false flag, give give information, or maybe get more from. This is troubling. This is immediate for this is cause for immediate expulsion from explosion from the school. Um, but yes. here's my thing. It's it's not how hard was it for you to figure out he was a spy? My only concern is that he'll break down in front of the enemy and well, unlike you all, they'll probably kill him on, on site. So I'm, I'm worried about his health, even if he may not be long for this school, this could be writing away his death with no information ever brought forward. Uh, you, you make a fair point. I'm not, don't want to send anyone else to their death. So, um, I mean, if you think that he can keep his mouth shut, and he's, he's, he'll survive, and if, if they ever dig into him, which I'm sure they do occasionally, then I'm all for it. He's supposed to meet with them in a month. See. If, if the higher-ups agree that it's okay, then maybe he's there and he can, you know, we can use this time to help uh, guide him to make sure that he it can, he knows that he can be a proper hero and a rune warrior, which he desires and I think there's something there otherwise we just kick him out and then he just joins and then, then nothing is nothing is gained and he's still a shitty person so maybe there's a way that we can why do you uh, care like, about this fellow so much I don't have a high opinion of Creed what do you mean so you why seem I... very concerned about his his well-being he's a life he might not be fully innocent, but not many people are. And 
everyone re deserves their chance of redemption. Well, that we can both agree to. But it's, it's also equally important that we put our energy to people that can be helped. Well, Readers have been given many opportunities to do the right thing and always seems to do the wrong thing. You say give him a second chance, but he's more on like a fifth, sixth, or seventh chance. How long before he gets someone killed or himself killed? Then what, what would you suppose we do? Lock him up and throw away the key? Well, kicking him sense. off of this campus would be an immediate effect to protect the students here. The information that is presented in this piece of paper is extraordinarily dangerous for the night chapter to possess. So now we can't give him a slap on the wrist because we want to save everyone. This information puts all of us at risk, grave risk. understand I don't know what to do I'll have to bring it before the school board I'm not looking to just throw him out as you may have considered but I am thinking that it's still too dangerous for him to be here get him set up somewhere else perhaps is the avenue will pursue if he's expelled maybe maybe there's somewhere else he can go to uh, a little more under the radar, but can still be of a service to kind of pull his weight. I don't know where that would be, but I understand that he would have to leave here. We'll see. We'll, we'll work out all the details. Thank you for bringing this forward. Know that I tell you what I tell you to be honest, because I want our relationship to be honest. I may not have been exactly what you wanted to hear when it pertains to Creed, but I'm sure that you understand the circumstances are severe. Information is a very powerful tool, and you got to make sure that uh, those who need it can have it. So, from what I've learned about all the place, some of the people here, not everyone here is a comes from a, a flowery backstory. You say of of a whole wholesome environment. So, just because someone has messed up a few times doesn't mean they can't change in the in the end. Oh, I'm absolutely. Sure we don't only take that. in uh, people who are good in nature. We take in anyone that is willing to be taken in. Of course, there's a quota for how many people we can accept. But look around at the students. They're as diverse as diverse can be. Reed himself is here because of us, originally. Yes. So it was never a matter of character initially. However, there's only so many mistakes you can turn a blind eye to. Now, with that said, I am going to do everything I can to help him. I just want you to understand that if he's expelled, this was not a decision I made alone. Of course. This, uh, if you could let me know what happens, that would be, I'd be grateful. And anything I can do to help. Absolutely. Oh, uh, can I have a bite of that sandwich? That looks really, that looks really good. And I'll just kind of... I'll kind no. of start moving my, my hand towards it. Uh, he looks at you grudgingly and he, he he puts it in half and gives it to you a uh, half of it. I'm just, <laughs> I just started laughing. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, sir. Enjoy your enjoy your lunch. You need it. You're looking You're looking like you need a good sandwich. Come on. <laughs> he laughs. You walk out. You're right, not all the students are hopeless. My opinion of you has changed. But he said it jokingly. He never really thought that. <laughs> and he takes a bite of his sandwich as you all retreat. Um, with that said, um, besides actually setting out towards our adventure, is there anything any of the players would like to do today slash tonight before we set out tomorrow to the uh, to begin our journey? Well, I figure yeah. it's about that hour time where Amrit said to meet up. Yeah. Sure, so we can all meet up in the library. Yeah, it's a good one. Library. So Sora, yeah, after Dondo incident, Sora's just sitting there, like, having some ice cream and bananas to herself since he left so much behind. Is there any more of that? Where'd that come from? Hmm. Here, you can take the rest of this. I'm My brain's beginning to hurt. You sure? I don't need to steal your ice cream. It's not stealing when you're giving it. Here you go. Thanks, Sora. Ah, uh, my head. Oh, that was a mistake. 
she kind of looks at it like to make sure it's just ice cream and you just have a cold freeze and not like something nefarious. Where'd you get this from? I um, nicked it from the kitchens. Oh, okay. She takes a bite. It's just ice cream and bananas. The barbecue sauce is nowhere to be seen. Good. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. Yep. Uh, I don't think we have, Sparks? like, um... Yeah. Is this box always been there? Is it just, like, a map thing? Or does it look different? Or is that the mailbox? Oh, okay, maybe. Where did that box come from? In the box! <laughs> What's in the box? Get down! That was a good movie. <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? Uh, no, that's the the uh, mailbox is empty. Okay, no, I'll just wait. I'll lean up against the shelf now. So, we find ourselves walking into certain death again. Isn't that fun? Yay. Which is why I have some great news. Okay, lay it on me. I was joking, it's not great. Ah, uh, you tease. You get a smirk out of Phoenix. So, besides Sora's brother, we have a new member among us. The, um, blue lady? Yeah. What was her name again? It's Nikita. Oh, that's very pretty. Um, she's one of me. Oh, she's a ram Wait, woman? Like, Nightshade, you? Night chapter, yeah. Sorry. It's fine, yeah. She, um, yeah, she's an oxidizer. Well, it's tricky. First off, obviously I know her. I saw her at the, um, the assembly or whatever. Um, to get information, first, Judith and I went to Tasha's team just to figure out what's going on with that. So yeah, she, they were in trouble and she just came out of nowhere, helped them out, and they brought her in. Coincidence? No. No. Secondly, we talked to Creed since we know he tried to be in the night chapter. Turns out he's a mole. He's been giving information to the night chapter about us and the whereabouts of what we've been doing and different levels of security. Hmm. Yeah. So we've written um, down all the information. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I know. He, uh, we've given that information to Mistafar, and uh, they're trying to they're going to figure out what to do with him. And then finally, um, went to her room, and that's where things get even, well, stranger. Because Creed mentioned that she, the woman that they met, didn't recall him from his time with the night chapter. That she seemed different. And it turns out it's because she is. I'm pretty sure she's a clone. The spoon in Phoenix's hand like slowly drops to the bowl. And she just kind of like freezes for a moment. Did you say a clone? Yes. I thought I was the only one. Do you think this clone is more of a message from the Night Chapter themselves? <sighs> All oh. I know is, I went to her room. She didn't know who I was. No recognition, no recollection. And the moment I said my name, she attacked me, or tried to. 
and she didn't know why she had done that. It sounds like she may be sleeping while awake. Programmed. Is that even possible for a person? Like a machine? Mm -hmm. Was it possible before for you to use your rune power to kill so to try and kill someone you love? What? You nearly killed me with your rune. That wouldn't have normally been possible either, I believe. He like stops for a minute and thinks about it. Shit. That's a good point. So, let's say it is possible. Um, shit. As far as she knows, she's from some random town with some random order of priest destined for something. She's not sure what she just knows what's in, which is likely my head on, a, on the floor, but yeah. Is she a water rune user like yourself as well? Last I checked, but I'm pretty sure she's light now. Hmm. It's hard to, to, to pin down what her abilities are. Truth be told, I didn't know what they all were to start with. Question is... Are you really the grand prize? Or is everything here? And like her finger goes up and does a circular motion to me like the whole school. Or is this the grand prize? I can't help but feel with all of our problems mixing together into this one space. I can't help but feel it's all connected somehow. You gotta tell Mr. Far. Not that she's guilty of anything. She doesn't seem like she even knows what she's being used for, but they gotta know. And as far as she knows, she's the real deal. So we should all be careful not to make her think otherwise. Sure. Yeah. Lewis, what do you think? Honestly, I'm not that well versed when it comes to this type of thing. My best guess is possibly some sort of advanced charm and magic. A companion of mine used to dabble a bit, though I haven't heard anything to this extent. What was the name? Name? Yes, well, what was the name? Your friend. No. Shit, check the notes, check the notes. <laughs> we used to call her Nina. I only ask this. Everything feels connected, and like every piece of information is greatly important so I don't know I feel like there's many pieces we are missing so any bit of information is gonna help do you have a way of contacting this old friend <sighs> we split ways a long time ago that and I doubt she wants to see me would it hurt to see if Valetta can get through to them asking them if they are aware of charms like this and what you can do to break them it is uh, it's important Noel you probably have better ch have better chances at asking Aether to do that sure. I unfortunately lost contact with her a long time ago and I sure as hell wouldn't want to see her again after all this time Well, maybe, maybe we can 
leave word for Aether, but I know we're on a bit of a time crunch as well to go on this mission. And honestly, if she's not the only one with some something, you know, maybe controlling or something inside of her around here, so you know. I'm not really not really sure how worried we should be. If she is a clone of somebody from the night chapter, then she's, I'm not saying she's willing. I'm just saying it makes sense that she would be planted here by them. And Creed was planted here by them, according to you guys. It's a big freaking deal. It's not just she's being controlled by something. It's that they have infiltrated this place. I'm not saying it's not a big deal. I'm not saying that we shouldn't tell anybody, but at the same time, we know Lewis has some issues. Amrit is a clone, and now we have her too. So uh, yeah, we should tell uh, Mr. Far, of course. But you know, just be just be as wary as you would be with anybody else around here. Speaking of hey. that, it should be noted that if anything seems fishy with me or her. I don't say this lightly, but this is bigger than me. Do what you have to do. What happened to Sora can't happen again. If I go off the rails legitimately, don't hesitate. For me, her, hell, even greed. Is that understood? He also looks at all of you. Get a two-finger salute from Phoenix and no words. Lois nods. No words either. You know Sorry. I'm looking. Um, Sora would tilt their head looking at you. Why would I kill someone that has become my family? You help those that have lost their way, especially the ones you care about. I'll slap you silly to get your sentence about you, but do not ask me of this again. Fine. Your funeral. Judith. I'd stab you right in the heart where you stand, if it was to only help protect you. Great. Three out of four, <laughs> I'll take it. It's I'm not sure as it's not, too, so fuck it. It's not that dark for me, Amrit, but you know I'll do anything to help protect you. I appreciate it. All this Sora, um, I appreciate you too. Thank you, Amrit. That um all this talking though, it makes me wonder was um is Creed a clone? Probably not. I guess I, I would feel like the source they have for that one is a bit um, faulty. Yeah, I don't think they'd um, deal with a sample like that. He is a um, entertaining specimen, I suppose. Of course, keep your eye on him, because we we're still not sure if he's willing to play ball with being a, I don't know, triple agent at this point. But yeah. Oh God, I can't imagine being in a room with more of one creed. Yes. Um, and when we're, when we're finished here, I'll go let Tasha know. So she's aware as well. Of sure. Of the stuff with uh, um, Creed, not Nikita. Alrighty. Anything else? Um, Lewis, you been feeling all right these past few months? I walk too. That's I felt in a while, actually. No farting out any shadowed dragons? Hmm. Thanks, why not? So I'm getting a really bad feeling. How do you mean? Early on the day. 
Dondo, well, kind of ran out the window, took a look, and uh, saw something. There wasn't anything there, but I don't know. Just threw me off a bit. Like a shadow or something? Yeah. I mean, we are chased by Ogobas. Could be seeing the metaphor of what hunts me and him. Maybe. Just best to stay on guard. Well, I am going to go get my things ready and spend what time I have enjoying the comfort of my room. Until then. Oh, hey, Jenkins. Oh. Jenkins. All right. Um, it's been a day. I'll fuck off, too. Gonna need all the rest we can get. Like Claire said, Jenkins as he walks by. I imagine he gives a cherry Jenkins. He <sighs> went over this something to talk to Tasha, but I'm just, I'm not, I won't, we can fast track that. Like, yeah, you can just say you informed her, yeah. He just kind of informed her what eventually good old Dondo returns to the room as well. Uh, by the way, Dondo is, is uh, he didn't want to stay in one of the crappier rooms. So he's probably sleeping on the couch in your room, so, or on this midsection bed. What are these kind of, those, those beds in the middle of the room, or are they tables? Some of them have drinks on them, some of them have pillows. That's, I was wondering if it was a table with a tablecloth on it, I don't know. Yeah, but it's weird because some of them have, then have pillows, like, especially laid on. <laughs> So we'll just we'll just chalk it up to it's it's a multi it's both multi it's an right, so anyways <clears throat> you guys all gather and do whatever it is that you guys do have your meeting which is very uh, awesome by the way is there anything else you'd like to do today before we set out tomorrow speak now or forever hold your breath Can we buy some supplies like just, just a, a quick, quick little uh, shop you could though uh Mr. Far told you that you guys are going to stop into Divine for an adventurer shop that gives you guys a better rate. Okay, great. So I'd probably just save to get to Divine. One more letter sent out to Paz. Just not going into details about anything, really painting it as, yeah, this place is great. I roll type thing, but just keeping in touch with family. Certainly, I'd imagine that when, when you guys get back from your mission, if you get back from mission, you guys will uh, yeah. probably have some some new mail coming in. Conventional mail travel is done by horse and carriage, so it takes a little bit longer to get to constantly get updates unless you're really local. Uh, unfortunately, having that all moved towards between the flames level of moving around information for our items yet. Um, as you guys all spend your nights doing whatever it is you want to do, does anyone want to have a closeout on the night or can we just go to tomorrow? Either way, I do not mind. Um, one quick scene for Lois. Absolutely, let's hear it. As, uh, Lois goes into, goes and starts turning in for the night, having said the name Nina, he, uh, just slowly reaches into his pocket and pulls out what seems to be a small uh, clump of strings, something that almost appeared like it used to be a bracelet of some sort, with a total of four different strings that have long since broken over the years. One colored a bright red, another a now extremely dirty white, and another pure black, with the fourth being a brownish type of color. He kind of just rubs his thumb against it for a brief moment, just staring at the strings. 
and lets out a deep sigh before just heading to bed. Awesome. Night is uneventful. Tomorrow hopefully is. As you all sleep and eventually wake, one of you wake sooner. Emirate. Just a minute. I like creaked the, um, I didn't, hey, I, I still have a knife. I, I creaked the yeah. door open a little bit. And I did say the night was uneventful, but that wasn't true. It's about 2 a.m. right now. Can I come inside? Uh, yeah. Sweet. And now it's tomorrow. We will open one of our sessions with how that conversation went. But for now, we only know that she would have been in that room for a good bit of time before returning to her own. So like I said, tomorrow, we're all wide awake. Hope you're ready for an adventure. Awesome. Am I alive? You are alive. Okay. You're brain controlled now. <laughs> you're alive. You had a very interesting conversation with Nikita, and we're going to save that for next session's opening. Alrighty. She did a wrist watch pocket and I can't talk. A wrist thingy in front of you dangling back and forth like a pendulum and hypnotize you and now you go kill us all. This is tap this you tapped over the teacup and you fell through the floor. <laughs> I gave y'all command. Do what y'all gotta do. So with that said, it is time to set out on our adventure, and our adventure is going to be quite exciting. You all would assemble downstairs at some point in time, having the usual breakfast. You would notice Mr. Far is having breakfast first. He's already cleaned two or three plates. He's just not stopping. Like the man's never had a meal before. He just keeps going. <sighs> He's looking around, hoping no one's going to call out to him. He just keeps eating. Now look at you. Yes. Sorry. Gotta eat when we can around here. I'm sure you understand. Sure. He has to make up for lost time. With that said, I'll put you guys downstairs briefly. This is only put Sora on the table with Amra. Maybe they're having a morning dance. But you guys would be having breakfast before eventually setting out. And this far goes. Okay. We found our burial site that will be tackled. Not much information about it. We're just detecting aura from Malders in the general location. He, pull, he sprawls a world map down to go to the world map. We are here. Our destination is here. First, we'll travel through the main roads Forcing carriage to Divine. After we restock and get supplied and spend the night in Divine, we will move across this bridge where the carriage will then promptly leave us to take the rest of the journey on foot, as the primordial planes are too dangerous. Then, we will do our best to avoid Tro City before meeting up at the thick of the primordial planes and cutting through the woods. It will be quite a journey to reach the place. We do not want to engage Troll City as even though they are a recognized city-state of their own power, they're very aggressive and dangerous and they do not like people on their territory. But it's the fastest route. If we go the longer way, it'll take us twice the amount of time to circle the mountain. Are they aware of this potential Malder threat in their backyard? They probably do not care. It's the bigger conversation to have. Though we have attempted to talk with Troll City for safe travels, we've gotten no responses yet. No oh, goody. Be extra careful when taking that route. They have been known occasionally to capture a strangler or two and 
throw them into their arenas, but we have each other. As long as we, we stay strong and present ourselves as formidable, they will likely either back down or we will defeat them. But we cannot take the shortcut through Tro City. Such a path is impossible. Only arrange our deaths. We should know that the primordial plains belong to the great dinosaurs, the first beasts to ever walk the world alongside Zion the Lion himself. Be very careful on the primordial plains. Make sure you're sticking to your survival skills. We don't know what we hunt yet, but we know that our part to play is to close Palm's forces. Shut them down, destroy them, put them away. So I want to offer you a final chance to withdraw. Instead, we can go to class as normal, continue our lessons. I, for one, wish to go forward. Excellent. I wish, I wish to prove myself to be an Aku. And the darkness we all face shall come regardless of what we do, but at least we can have a hand in making sure no one else can we can spare as many people as we can excellent to be aware that the road to white walk was easy secured paved once we hit the primordial plains in troll city it will be an active survival but i appreciate you taking up mantle anyone else Is everyone here i need confirmation even a nod or a yes are willing to do this if we weren't then we wouldn't deserve to be here right he nods smile on his face good good let's see the rest of the students I hope you all share a similar mindset we didn't pack our bags for nothing I didn't pack anything <laughs> yeah he looks at it right he didn't pack nothing what? We really need to get you a new pair of clothes. Why? I think you'd look nice in a, um, what was it, a uh, masquerade outfit. A what? I saw some of those during our festival trip. So those people who wear those half masks. I thought you were going to recommend pockets. I mean, pockets are good, too. Anyway, for now, I have potions. That's all. Masses sound cool, though. I joined the academy for a reason. It wouldn't exactly be... I wouldn't exactly be the best role model here if I decided to back out. Now, did I? Now, would I? As he, uh just tightens up what seems to be like two different swords that are uh, just holstered on the, his back hip the shield that's on his back and the one that's attached to his mechanical arm well then it's in order do you have anything you'd like to do here if you're particularly trying to purchase materials I suggest you wait till we get to divine only be a day's travel with the mountain carriage. Um, you all get ready. There's someone I would like to talk to before I go. Okay. Sora would like to go find little Sakura. Certainly. You would find her. She's usually on the first level in the morning. Uh, she, though, she typically eats breakfast alone for whatever reason. Um, Sora will come up to her and then crouch down onto the balls of her feet, smiling. Welcome, morning, Lady Sakura. She smiles at you, stands up, and give me a dexterity saving throw. Look at this. It's a firebolt at you, but you dodge it. Wow. Yeah. That's a very impressive. I see that's an advanced spell that Judith knows. Oh, Judith knows how to do that? Yes. And now you do too. It's very cool. 
I'm not sure how dangerous it is. They keep telling me not to use it, but don't they know when you tell a kid not to do something, it just makes them want to do it more. Yes, it's a very clear blunder they keep falling into, but I digress. I'm going to be leaving for um, quite a while. I'm not sure when I'll be back, but there's a friend of mine I feel that needs a good friend while I'm away. Have you met Baby Mello? Oh, the, the dragon turtle? Yes. He's a dear friend of mine. Um, I want to entrust you with a very important task to keep him company while I'm away. Certainly. I am the most strongest, most respected, and most capable person I know. Those are all really big words for my age, so that should only make you really believe that it's the truthies. Thank you, Saka. This is very important to me. Okay, I feed him three times a day, maybe six times because he's pretty big. I'll just feed him nine times a day. And when I say me, I'm just gonna make a pile do all this. Uh, I'm gonna clean his shell twice a day. Again, Apollo's gonna do this to make sure it's nice. His toes are sharpened and his tongue is properly washed and uh, taken for walks and yeah, all that stuff, Paul's can do. But I'll take credit for it. Thank you, Sakura. I should be off, but um, if you can, he does really like it when you bring him gold. Okay, don't don't tell anyone that I know Firebolt because I want to if I want to surprise people. Okay, just whatever you do, do not shoot it at a dry patch of grass. It's oh Jesus yeah. Works. That's interesting. Okay, I won't do that. Nope. Because you said not to, I'm not going to do that. Exactly, because I said so, you shouldn't do it. It would be so bad if you did. Oh, well, um... Well, thanks for telling me not to do it, then. Not going to happen. I will miss you, Sakura, but I shall be back soon. Okay. Take and care, good luck. She waves and she'll head back to the group. Excellent. So as you do head back to the group, uh, so far as I already got the carriage ready and looks down to you all and says, you ready to depart? Yep. Looks like it. And let's get it. Go to the theater page. Excellent. So you guys would travel. It's a day's travel on the road. You guys want to engage each other at all or fast forward to arriving in divine. If traveling when there's no threat is up to you guys how fast you'd like to get to the other stuff versus conversing with you. Sora would like to talk to Lewis if possible. Sure, sure. I have a little picture. Just to have a picture. Why not? Oh, Event. Uh, <laughs> so Event. peaceful. <laughs> And eventually Sora would walk over and sit in front of Lewis and um, look at him for a second before speaking. Lewis, um, do you consider yourself a warrior, a hero, or a soldier? Interesting question. Why do you ask? She would grab the moonstone that hangs around her neck twirling it I do not believe I am ready to be known as Sora Aku similar to how I would feel someone would not feel ready to call themselves a hero or a warrior but you you became a warrior and a hero before you came here how do you know when you are one or when you're worthy to hold that title. Hmm. That was a tough one. 
as if she kind of just like leans back in the carriage as it goes over a slight bump. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure when I ended up earning any of those titles. I just kind of did my own thing, helped a couple of people out, and it just happened. Yes, it's more of a feeling than an actual achievement. What is that feeling like when you feel like you have become what people call you? I guess it's that feeling when you manage to do a little bit of good and seeing that expression of sheer relief when all their troubles finally disappear. That feeling is when I know that I did what I meant, what I set out to do. Will it be similar when I feel I can be known as Sora Aku and take my family's rune? That's for you to decide. All my life I spent it considering my name to be Soa of the Turtle Islands. And that was enough. But I really do wish for this to be mine. I just know better for my teachings to not have material desires. Not to hold on too much to the to this world. But this is everything I have been searching for. The very basis of the truth shall set you free. I've always questioned why wind and the light chose me. I feel like I am on the cusp of that freedom. Just something is missing. Well, if I learned anything after adventuring for as long as I have, so that putting yourself in life or death situations will make you learn that lesson a lot quicker than you think. No We've more. certainly gone through plenty of those. <laughs> You're not wrong. Thank you, well, Lewis. If you were to ask me, you're doing pretty damn good yourself. Just the way you are. Just keep up the good work, and you'll do just fine. I'll do my best, old man. You just try and keep up. I'm coming for Still that gonna need to catch up to my experience. Too. Well, I think we both are. And she just raised her fist out to fist bump you. There's a slight smirk on his smile as he just like raises the uh, bottom of his palm and just meets uh, her fist. We shall do this together and when we get home, we are trying more alcohol that I have not tried. <laughs> just try to take it a bit light. I'll do what I want. <laughs> All right. But don't come crying to me when you guys start having a headache the next day. I will anyway. <laughs> All right. Anything from anybody else? Yeah, Amber, you got a lot in your mind. That conversation yesterday was eye-opening. Um, so as you guys travel to the destination and arrive at Divine, it would have been about a day's trip. So you'd have had each other's company. You'd imagine that on scene, we saw that one conversation, but plenty of you have engaged each other plenty of times. Sleeping wasn't the most comfortable in the car, but it beat walking and setting up tents. 
Um, when you do finally arrive in Divine, the city looks pretty, pretty beautiful. There's the city of Ophelia, which is where the Divine name comes from, and Grace of Delight Rune in particular. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. When you get there, you can see it's a lot more modern than uh the Fairlands. So the Fairlands has a lot of old ruins kind of built and made into offices and houses, include the old manor. Uh, it still has the love the loveliness of that feel, but with a, again a more modern touch. Uh traveling through the city, you could see that it's heavily populated. Fairlands, you would consider to be the main part of this this side of the country, but Divine seems to be more filled and rich, probably because it has a much larger population versus Fairland. Uh, you think this is like the city of New York versus the suburbs of New York? With that said, though, as you do arrive here, there's many lovely things to see, but first and foremost, we arrive towards the adventurer shop where we will all hopefully get properly outfitted. Mr. Far said he's going to range the sleeping conditions. So he's sending you out to the adventurer shop yourselves. He says to speak with Twinheart and they will take care of you. With that said, let's go ahead and okay. Yeah. It's now the right layer. The, when you get to let me know if you have vision or not. Yeah, yeah it should be uh, long rested and everything replenished. And you're not about to get in a fight, but you never know. All right, you guys are right here in the bottom. Do you guys all have vision? Yep. Yes. Yep. All good. After you, Lewis. <sighs> All right. Goes up the stairs and just lightly knocks on the door. Come inside. Opens it up. Just leaves the door open, knowing everybody else is coming in. You must not be from around here. You're not city folk. It's a shop. You don't have to knock to come into a shop. It's not someone's home, you know. She says with a smile on her face. Given <sighs> Phoenix's background, she's like eyeing this place up and down. How does this compare to the place she used to be before coming to the college? Um, it's it's similar to Icarus. Uh it has the noble taste that is Icarus, which is a very rich uh place to live and a lot of people can't afford to live there. Uh this would meet those standards. It's it's beautiful, it's just curious enough to make you really wonder what's on every shelf and behind every book. Stuff like that. She will be looking for hidden gems. Not literal gems, figure, you know. <laughs> Can I see what like all these elixirs are on the, on the table here? Let me survival check just to see if at a glance, since they are under a glass case, that's kind of why they look like they have a strange gray issue over them. Sure. Yeah, you notice a few of them are Potion of Superior Healing, Potion of Invisibility, Potion of Poisons, the green one. So traditionally, Potions of poison look like Potions of Healings, but they just sell it to you, and then there's also a mixture you can do to get it back to its own color. There's empty vials, everything an alchemist could use. In fact, these, these supplies here are specifically for alchemy, and you think that buying these supplies give you a better chance of success, and you just mark off a use of them whenever you do use them. Um... There are also papers here specifically to send notifications to Between the Flames. So if you can come here, drop them uh, five gold pieces because Between the Flames instant messaging is very, very expensive. Um, and she'll, she'll do that for you. Aria looks at each of you though and she just has a smile on her face. You all look special. Are you regular customers or here for something else? Depends on if you have anything interesting, I guess. <laughs> well, look around. 
Your eyes will serve you true in that purpose. Everything here to me is interesting. Phoenix is looking for a pearl that's worth a hundred gold pieces. Oh, you would find one fast enough. What do you have in the way of weaponry? We're not too large on weapons around here. We just get people ready for adventures, basic gear, climbing equipment and potions. Uh, general survival stuff, herbs, medicine, stuff like that, informational books. Uh, as for weapons, not too many. We keep what you'd expect to see, standard swords and daggers. We prioritize yeah. the survival side of adventuring. We assume people would bring their own weapons. Sure. Well, let me ask you this then. You know, like I'm um, sure the map and like the area we're going to. What do you think we might need in this area here? Climbing gear, anything like that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Wait a second, are you guys from Zion's Hope? I'll this. If there's a discount, sure. <laughs> no, but we already have bags made up for you free of charge. Oh, shit. We were told that you have an important mission to undertake. No details of the mission, though we never get the details. Um, so my father thought that since you are all heroes and help us, we could help you. And he's made you personal bags to take on your adventure. That's a nice touch. Oh, yes, he has my gratitude. You can well, hear him yes. now, I bet. His words softly in your minds. That's his voice ringing from the north, you know. The, the voice you kind of, the little bit of the, the tiny bit of low audio you hear in the in the song, uh, the voices is her, her, her father. Where he is he singing from? He points uh, up there. You should have your bags ready for you. He's expecting you could walk right in. He's probably just singing. He always does that. I can't move my token there. Uh, thank, thank you, Miss. And what was your name? Oray Twinheart. G the Blue Between the Flames. Nice to meet you. Meet you as well. And Phoenix, when you walk in, you see this gentleman. He's got his lute and he's spinning around and singing a song. Uh, excuse me. My name is Gail Twinheart. It's nice to meet you. There's a really long bow. You can tell he's the bardic type. Nice to meet you, Mr. Twinheart. Wonderful establishment you have here. Thank you. And you must be the students of Zion's Hope. I've been expecting you. So your daughter said. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I was a bit of an adventurer myself back in the days where I was pulled away for family affairs. Says if a smile on his face. I even traveled with Mother Nature herself. With that said, nonetheless, I think it's very good what you all are doing. And so today we've made you some bags that you can take on your friend. They'll surely help you succeed. Hopefully come home alive. And we can't spare everything. Full expenses. Can give you a little bit of a leg up. Adventure. I only ask that once it's settled, it no longer needs to be classified. You share your tales with me and my daughter so that I may weave your tales into song. It is what I do. Oh, we should tell them about our trip up to visit the water spirit. Sure, go ahead. I mean, this room's too small. It is too small. Let's leave someone more comfortable. Follow me. We'll get to the bags and stuff later. I'm sure you have a little time to spare. And he walks over here and through here. To a much bigger room. Uh, where he sits on the far side of the couch. Puts his feet up.
So, he picks up a book and a pen. Taking notes is important in this world. Documenting everything should be crucial. And, and then he puts his pen to his paper. This adventure. Spirit. Tell me about it. And that's where we'll take a time to break. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. Funny like story, you. that. I feel like this guy could be Judas' dad in a different life. I think not. He's a mm -hmm. bard. Uh huh. Takes notes and shit. Mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> Gross. What a loser. <laughs> Careful now, they, they're they one of the few people with healing where it's party. Well, uh, but yeah, but Gale, Gale was a, a, a player character in the previous camp. Uh, he was there oh. for about mm -hmm. half the campaign, a little less. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's yeah. nice to include him. I really was sitting here to like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get up. Oh. Like a yeah, oh, there we go. It, it, Saga. it took me a while. The art is so different. Yeah, he's always, he's 55 years older now, so. He's, his hair's yeah. aged, you know. He's, he's, he's much older, but yeah, that's the girl we know. He was he was like 19 or 20 in his adventure, young bard. And now, no, yeah, no. now he's like 70 years old, yeah. Very cool. Be right back. Yep, I'll see you guys in about nine, eight minutes. In a bit. Yahoo! Wow. Heck yeah. That was a fun little touching moment for Sora and Lois, though. <laughs>
right. Who doesn't love a nice little like mini interrogation session or scene to start the session, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, you know. I was like crying the entire time from laughing so hard. I know, right? <laughs> Reed is such a special little man, isn't he? Yes, but he did make it into the school, so we'll give him props for that at least. Feels oddly wrong to give him props for anything. I feel like the snitch teacher, whoever they are, had something to do with Reed getting in. I mean... It is Mystifar, so... What the...? Y'all hating on Mystifar? Not me. I disagree. I don't, tr I don't trust any of them. Man, I don't trust any of y'all. How about that? Not even me. <laughs> Especially you. No, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Now, if we're talking about you... Whoa there, brother! <laughs> Whoa now! No, that's fair. You're so, you rasang <laughs> on me, bro. You know, it's the weirdest feeling of being sus about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the old you is our BBEG, so. Yeah, it's me regardless. And another version of you was the was the end boss on the other campaign, on the other the mini campaign. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, did you guys did you guys watch uh, Lash in the Corner? Yeah. yeah. I got to the reveal, but I didn't get through the final battle. Oh, he's good. dead. I know he's not. I don't know, guys. Just uh, <laughs> I, I create things. It just comes back and hits us in the butt. It's never my intention. Putting it lightly. The best kind of players are the ones that leave seeds for the GM to mess around with. Make something, you know, Falco just rubs his hands together like Birdman, just like. <laughs> <laughs> you already yes, snow. You already snow. <laughs> oh, tree, y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna grab a water and start back up. I think it's been 10, but it might not have been. It's like nine, yeah. I'm gonna grab water real quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a good boy one day, don't worry. <laughs> you made a good boy. He was tortured and methodically and killed, so yeah, I don't blame you. Pardon? <laughs> this is true. Just pure background as well, though. <laughs> I need some relaxation next campaign. Just like, I'm just a dude. <laughs> I just, I'm just chilling. projector light and some random color so I look left in my room the one that's in my room and it's just pitch like red no <laughs> that's that's uh. not ominous at all <laughs> welcome to hell <laughs> hellfire <laughs> What calls? I like open the door. I see like a pink amaranth right in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Well, yeah, I prefer that over 
a little goblin lady at this point. Yeah, you're not wrong about that. Just face the problem head on. Throwing out freaking disintegrates like they're nothing. <laughs> All right, let's get a roll call. <clears throat> we have Phoenix. Yeah. Meow. Lewis. Hi, hi. Uh-huh. So, I am here. Here you are. Now, let us return to Sasha. So, Gail sits down. I'm gonna we'll assume you told him the spirit story, so you don't have to actually run to the Hold on, hold on. Oh, you want to tell him? Okay. <laughs> I think no. Judith is the best one. <laughs> no, I, hearing people get ready to tell the story, I was just gonna say, or you can just read about it in Between the Flames. That issue should be coming out uh, within the week. You're not the only one who, also, who has stories to tell, my friend smiles then you should know as best as any that the inside scoop is more personal than the paper but all's fair in love war and news that is well I shall wait for the advertisement perhaps you have something else to trade me Maybe we could tell him about what we're going to do. That could be interesting. That's classified. I thought the, I thought the deal was to tell him after something was unclassified. Hey, nod. Exactly. No need to rush. I enjoy stories. What I give you is not in exchange for anything. It would have just been nice to hear something, a tale or two. But regardless, let's get, let's get to the goodies. That's why you're here, I feel. Ore? Ore's my daughter, by the way. Uh, he comes in, got bags upon bags, and she drops on the ground. Ugh. Here we go. Ugh. Okay. Each of you have a climber's kit. She explains how to use it, which is handout covers, and this handout will be under relevant until it's no longer relevant. Never know when you need a climber's kit. Rather have one than not have one. Okay. Also, inside the climber's kit, each of you have one of these potions. You want to buy more potions? Sure. But these are really expensive. My father thought you each should have one. Thanks. Excellent. I think that's everything that I have. My father said he had some more stuff for you. And those climbing bags are heavy. Carrying five of them. I'm going to go back to the front of the shop. And she leaves and Gail, almost floating through the room, goes into this room back here. I would like to speak with each of you one at a time, please. What? Why? You don't have to speak to me. But if you must, please meet with me. He walks into the room. Oh. I was going to see where he went. You're the first to come to speak to me. Yes, you said to come speak to you, so I th uh, thought, why not? Excellent. Well, as you know, I used to be an adventurer, but now I'm just an old fool retired who loves to play music and, well, do what bards do. He turns around and he goes into a treasure chest. <sighs> Secret. Looks at you. Yes, yes, I got something. And, uh... Here we go. He gives you these Santa Peter. Which I will drop in the chat for you. I'll get them uploaded properly into the game later. I'll also drop into Discord from Fig Austin. Awesome. 
I think these would do you some good. What do you think? Whoa. I could punch someone with the strength of a bug. A big bug. That's the bug. <laughs> Based on the unclassified information of the previous tale, they were fighting a large centipede-like creature. It's almost thematic to hand this over to the next group going out. These will do nicely. I can't wait to acquaint them. Quite a mouth with my fists now. Listen, I meant what I said. I'm all for equipping the next generation of heroes with exactly what they need. I don't have much here, but I do have something for each of you. Along line, the same thing as I gave you, but different. Now, I'll send in the next person. Hopefully, they're equally as great. Thank you very much, Gail. And I do Do hope we can come back here so we can uh, tell you of our exploits. Smiles. I would really like that. And if anyone watching Sora comes out with these things over her fist and she's kind of shadow boxing a little bit, she's like, oh, this feels weird on my hands, but they feel good. Be ready to take this guy out. Oh, you're back. Okay. That's yeah, he, cool. <laughs> he gave me these bug gauntlets. Aren't they cool? He called them a centipedes. Creative. Hello, Mr. Gale. Phoenix. I was worried you'd be next. The box. Fortunately, I have nothing for you. Oh, okay. Better have something for your companion, Jenkins. Yeah. Goes into oh. his bag. Now you'll have to do some upgrades to Jenkins. But I'm sure you won't mind this further progressing. Unless, of course, you wish to remove your own eye, but that comes with failures upon the perception of them. I this sheet is the most rarest item I hold. It's perfect for someone like you. Based on the stories I've been told, you can embed this into Jenkins himself. Oh, and doubling down, interesting. dropping it here and there, he would explain to you what the appraiser's eye does. And that is extraordinarily valuable and useful. That perhaps you won't need to uh, worry about many of the things you encounter in the future using it. If you don't mind my asking, I mean, I'm part of a guild, merchant guild myself. I can't help but wonder how you stay in business giving away such fine finds. <laughs> we don't deal in magic items here. I'm giving you for my personal hoard of equipment. Usually we sell stuff, but the climber's kit and the potion will be a written expense. Let's call it a donation. People do it all the time when they're on the up. That's when they're on the low. These items I'm giving to each of you is because I believe each of you are special. And I believe each of you have an important part to play in the world. When I use the appraiser's eye to cast upon the earth legends lore, instead what was revealed to me was a group of heroes who would change the world as we know it. He looks, he looks in at an old picture of him on the wall. He's much younger. Let's just say I missed out on one adventure. This time I'll be there in spirit. Very generous of you. Thank you very much. And if you ever find yourself in Icarus, hit up Frankie's Pawn Shop. I don't think I'll be there anymore, but I'll let him know of you. Thank you. He does a long bow. I'm sorry I didn't have anything specifically for you, but I'm sure you did not mind this for your Jenkins. Not at all. And um, above table, the reason why I wanted a hundred gold Ident identify, yeah. So what? I could do identify. Can I put it back? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume you didn't buy anything yet. You were just window shopping and talking. And then you met her father. So it's fine. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, when you, when you mentioned that, I was like, lol, I got this item. I didn't have a chance to upload it. But I was like, I already knew what items I was going to give you. <laughs> Perfect. 
my plan was to take my break to upload them then you know I actually have a family too <laughs> so anyways with that said we could send in whoever's next no need to be afraid of him he's friendly I'll, I'll, I'll go sounds good oh jesus Judith Bloom, reporter of Between the Flame. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's a nice little room you have here as well. Smiles. Yes, but play second fiddle to the place you've come from. Wouldn't you agree? Um, I wouldn't. It all depends on what you make of it. It seems like you have some nice memories and things that make you happy in here. I'll gesture to the photo and things like that. <laughs> it's a play on words, you see. What I have for you is called exactly that. It'll... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? And he pulls out an item for you. Don't be sorry. Oh. Just be a septic. I, this looks like a, a fiddle that was given a lot, a lot of love, and I'm going to be honest, I don't... Uh, I'm not really the best player of, of things. Neither was I, and it has been given a lot of love. Used by me and my father before me, but my daughter, as you see, she is not of the body take. You may not be a bard yourself, but as a reporter, your voice matters. Every now and then you may need to put on a show or performance. Nothing's better than a second fiddle. Um, you're too, too kind, Gail. I, um, well, here, and I'll, and I'll kind of, I'll go through my bag and I'll pull out um, one of the many photos I have, and it's going to be one of like the group shots of everybody there. Uh, probably, probably when we, like right after we had just finished, uh, uh, killing those, uh, food for the blood for the burial food. For, for, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We were like in like the, this like beautiful enchanting kind of forest. And I'll say, uh, here, I have other copies, but maybe this is something that you could put on your wall as well. And you're in luck because this is uh, oil alert, but this is part of the uh, story from that will come out soon that we were talking about. Gives you a, a smile and tells you, absolutely. Thank you. And he hangs it up next to his a picture of his younger self. You tell he wishes he was there, that he did more, but he had obligations to his family that pulled him away from adventure. Thank you, uh, Gail. I'll, I'll send the next person in. <laughs> so, Judith and exits there, uh, the room, and she has a fiddle in her hand. And is like, uh, okay, who, who, who's next? I was thinking artwork-wise, what if that's the one you eventually had put on your back? Maybe you don't use it often, but... <laughs> Hey. I like it. I like it. Uh, Emma, you're in? Uh, sure. Let me squeeze Panasaur here. Okay. I don't know about this guy. He'll be fine. No, an even smaller space. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> he turns around and you see electricity foam in his hand. Time to die, Emrut. I knew it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you have to be a little bit more uh, lax, you know. Sure. Anyways, electricity was just a play on what I'm planning to give you. I'll vault dagger. Gentlemen like yourself could make great use of a weapon like this. See, I like doing stuff like that. Playing into what I would later reveal. 
Boy, it is revealed. Oh, shit. Who made this? Fuck all if I know. Most of the stuff I found in my adventures. Hmm. I feel like it touches the blade with the finger and, like, zaps. I'm like, ah, shit. There was, <laughs> like, a sheath for this, or...? Oh, you could slide it into any dagger sheath. He pulls out your dagger and tosses it in the garbage bin. There. Fair enough. Um, so, thanks. Listen, I know you're not the conversational type, and I'm exactly the opposite of you. I love conversation. I could hold it for hours, but let's just say goodbye, shall we? And you're welcome. All right. Noel, you're up. All right. Just lightly opens the door. What is Noel's current equipment looking like? I mean, Lewis, if Cameron's running for the helping me. What is Lewis's uh, current equipment looking like? Does he typically use a shield and short and board? Does he use two handed? What's, what's he looking like he does? Uh, he seems like he usually does a uh, sword and board with a uh, rusted shield currently on his mechanical and the uh, rusted blade that's he usually uses. But he also has his uh, newer shield and sword that he just kind of keeps on him, but doesn't seem to be actively using. Uh, you have too much shit on you. Please discard one of those shields. I have a better one. For you. Uh, sure too large to walk around with three of them you got to make room somewhere so drop one of them i'll donate it to some charity service or i'll flip it for half its worth got it and he just takes off the new one you are a bulwark of defense a beast in your own right and like any beast, you should have equipment that reflects a beastly nature. And thus, I present to you shield of the great badger. So that you may make great use of it, as the name implies. I do what I can with it. If you were able to be hold your ground before, you'll hold your ground even better now. Anyways, I don't expect hugs or kisses. Just that you will use this to great effect and survive. With that said, that's all I have for Diamond's gear, potion of heroism, magical item. I hope that was worthy enough. But if not, you are able to purchase more things in the shop proper. Don't worry, I'm... It's much more than we were expecting. Thank you. I hope that my expectations not much more. He looks away. <laughs> Good day. Good day well, to you too. While everybody was in the room getting their stuff, Phoenix came out to Oral to talk shop and given um, Phoenix's guild merchant background, she has a letter of introduction. Um, she's just going to flash the paper to Earl so she knows that Phoenix is like legit. You know, with the place, a name like Divine, these streets are like beautiful. They're clean, they're sparkling, they're so nice. But every city has to have their back alleys. And she kind of leans in close. Where can I go that might have some relics? Relics? <laughs> well, Divine is not a place for relics. You're more often mm -hmm. to find them in the Fairlands itself. So I could write you an address so whenever you do travel back, you can explore it. I'd appreciate that. If this place is lacking relics, then where can I find some old copies of Wizards Weekly? Wizards Weekly, you say? 
of that is a really good paper publisher. You can find old editions and new editions just down the street from here at Marty's. Marty's got it. Are you friends? If I tell them you sent me, will that work well? Show them the paper you just showed me, and then you'll get the usual merchant discount, which is 10%. Thank you. You are a dear. And she backs off, rolls up her paper, tucks it away. Oh, don't forget Ooh. this. She gives you the address for the place in Fairlands. It's hidden. Only special introduction. When you go there, you'll need to use a false name and you'll need to have something to cover your face. Think of it like a thieves den, except it's only for the most exclusive merchants. But our security is very important to us. So you must hide your identity when you go. Understood. She gives the two finger salute. You have been amazing. Thank you. Hey guys. Hope my father wasn't too much of a creep. He always goes on and on about his old adventuring days. He hasn't adventured in 40 something years. You apologize if he talks your ear off. Ah, oh, not at all. Not at all. Bard's gonna do what a bard's gonna do. <laughs> that right. She pretends to browse the tables. Although, I think she would like a healing potion since we heal. Oh, Her, you're that in reminds a, me. You're in a city, so a healing potion would go for about 125 and eight. You have to go to rural areas for it to be much cheaper. So cut you some slack and let you take it for a flat 100 instead of the, the GP cost written. Cool. So these are the regular healing potions. Yeah. Cool. Cool. He has other ones, but they're they're pretty expensive. I'm not sure how you guys want this. This would be a location you guys could travel to. Uh, well, we mentioned earlier that she has potions of poisons, invisibility, uh, superior healing. She's got a lot of potions in it. How much for the potion of invisibility? Five hundred GP. But for you, I would sell it to you for three fifty. <laughs> um, how much would be a common healing motion? 100 is what we're going for now. They're usually 125, but my father's very fond of you all, and I like you myself. Um, I can go ahead and buy this potion here, and I can give the rest of my money to Judith for her invisibility. No, 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 no. Save, save your money. I'll, I'll take one of those healing potions as well, please. But I like you, and I want you to live. Yeah, I, I, it's okay. Let me just, what exactly does the potion of invisibility do besides the obvious? I think it's just that. Dumb person. Oh, you guys gonna get healing potions? Uh, I am at least buying one common healing potion, so 100 full deducted. Uh,. I might. How much is the um, the equipment here to um, make pro potions? See for the alchemist kit that you were talking about before. Oh, they don't have any uh, soul stones right now. The basic ones you would need. They have all the other supplies you need. Gotcha. Okay. I see that supplies you need. Eight ounce liquid. Any glass vials. So they could say the glass vials here. Uh, they also have improved alchemy kits, which, by the way, the improved alchemy supplies. Something new to D&D &D that I'm trying to introduce in. Just like this plus one weapons, you can get a plus one uh, alchemy supplies or plus one painter supplies. Uh, they don't sell those all here, but they do have the alchemist. The alchemist supplies plus one. How much is that? Um, that is 500. But the kit is permanent. So once you buy it, it's like you just brought a plus one sword. Uh, so it's it's an investment. You may not, I don't know if you can afford it right now, but it's definitely something you would want to pick up in the future. If I pooled some of my money for that with Amru, we could maybe do that. I have about 300. If I give him, so if I give him 100, can two people give him 50? Because this is an investment to our livelihoods. <laughs> up to you. Yeah, Phoenix would do it. Yeah, sure. I'll give you 50. All right, I will deduct another 100. 
Thanks. I'll remember this when I'm making the shit to save your lives. All right. Make the ducks. He goes, I've given you, I've given you a discount on everything in here so far. The supplies are no different. 400 is fine. Oh. Uh, I'll just take my money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'll quickly take some money back. <laughs> After you different beasts, what a 50 each. <laughs> so, already would give you the plus one alchemist supplies, and now you have those. <laughs> Does anyone else want to buy anything here? Or we probably go to Marty's, Theater of the Mind Marty's, and then eventually leave this place. Oh, oh Phoenix is trying to go to Marty's by herself. Oh, I figured with Theater of Mind, you go to Marty's, and then everyone else gets to the end eventually. Uh, what's what's Marty's? You don't know. No, Phoenix asked for some like pawn shop type thing, someplace to get some Wizards Weekly, which might make Judith mad. That's why she's not saying. Whoa. Well, Sora's going to be oh. kind of hovering around you, so it's up to you if you want to send her away. She wouldn't. Are you are you, are you leaving us, Phoenix? Do you have things you have to do? I'll just, I like to shop. It'd probably be boring to you. You're not wrong there. Thinking. Uh, All right, we'll see you later then. Yes, we won't be long. Eventually, Miss Safa would gather you all up at the tavern, the ones he finds along the way, and eventually Phoenix Sword and Jenkins would arrive too. But for that, we can go back to the over page. And did you say? I'm oh, sorry. Did did you say that when we're, this place is like a bunch of? It's like a city of light. Is there just like a bunch of people running around with like halos on their heads? Oh uh, no, because light runes people are so rare only one out okay. of every 100 people are rune warriors which by the way that's a drastic in increase from last campaign worlds one out of every a thousand so it's a lot more common now for rune warriors they to some people rune warriors are not as special anymore whereas in the metal rain days if you're a rune warrior everyone would gather and their jaws would drop uh but you would so you would occasionally see someone with a halo one out of every 100 people <laughs> And other than that, though, they are dressed in a manner to support Ophelia. I would say that their attire kind of looks like an old Rome kind of white, almost pure white outfit with roped belts around themselves. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Phoenix, you arrive with Sor and Jenkins, most importantly, at Marty's. Yeah, so she walks in and just immediately eyes the shelves and everything as she is looking for classic Wizards Weekly because she pretty much absorbed all the ones that came through the shop in the Icarus. She's looking for, I believe you said 1 through 50 were like the amazing ones. Yeah. That's the background of the war, so... If she could find any of those, but she will say hello to whoever's working in there. Um, you know, shoot the wind, talk shop, and ask them if they have any hiding in the back that are meant special condition. Yeah, and wait, didn't you? Didn't we roll for you to have? You already have one, right? Yeah, I have one of them. I think you have the first edition of Metal Rain. So whatever edition that is, that's when it. Was I have really exciting. forty-nine. So it was, it, was for, it was after 49 that it was really exciting. That was the first edition of Metal. Yeah, that those are the ones she's looking for because she's always looking for hints that have to do with relics. So that's why those are so important okay. to her. So the, he would tell you, uh, and he, he um, he's a big dude. Uh, he's human, but you would think he's dwarf because he's kind of short and really stout and stuff. But he looks at you and he tells you, Oh, you want some old books, dear? Some uh, metal rain, have you? Yeah, he even I talks like a dwarf. Me. Holy shit, this guy's a dwarf. Anyways, are you talking to him? He walks in the back and he's like, oh, yeah, right. back in a minute. And when he goes to the back and 
probably about a minute or two later, he comes out with what looks like to be some type of mining bag. He opens it up. The bus is in here, don't I? And he pulls out two books. Issue number 17. Not what you're looking for. Take it. And uh, issue number 53. Oh, can I see that one? Yeah. A gondola. She um, will take um, a cloth out from her pocket and wipe her hands, make sure there's nothing on there. And she will look at this one. It is, is it one of the ones from Metal Rain? Yep. So after 49, 50, yep, 53 would be one. Yep. So you, um, you look at it and this was pretty early on. This would actually depict a, um, a creature in the woods made of pure shadows. Malder, who came from a relic place based on the strides of the Wizard Weekly. And you could see that if we reference the world map, which I'll put you on real quick, just in case you ever want to explore this location. Uh, move you guys there real quick. Some change the music. Um, it's in the Windfall Woods. There seems to be, but this was a long time ago. No saying it's still there. But in the Windfall Woods, you could see that it flew by what looks to be a buried automaton. But this automaton is probably between huge or large. One of those two size categories are really big. Well, we're, we're simple terms, a Gundam esque relic. I know this one's special. How much would it take to take it off your hands? Oh, you off. You make me a good offer and I'll take it. What you say is worth there, laddie. Have you ever seen any of these? And she takes out the sack of Dimatron and scales that we got. Yep, the Dimatron clunk. Yeah, she has one clump of those. And she's going to try to read his face to see if he thinks these are amazing or not. Insight. It's hard to tell, but he is looking at his lips, so some of the cues are obvious. Did Sora gander from this conversation? Sure, you can you can help out and do an insight. Okay. Hell yeah. yeah. You'd think that if she sweetens the deal a bit, he'll he'll go for it. He's interested, but he understands the value of this so let's see. If we Kelly Blue Book the item, it's probably around seven hundred GP for the book. Oh um, shit. But he's still willing to play ball for material goods. So you think if you sweeten the deal, uh, he, he'll he'll let it go. This is also in the future if you ever need to flip your collection, have a shit ton of money. I think you ever would. Uh, Sora would hand um, Phoenix her clunk of Dimatron scales and wink at her. Are you sure? Because these were kind of from your turtle. You sh I mean a reminder of your turtle and that but you know what I mean are you sure I don't want to take your stuff this is important to you and he gave it to me on his terms and this is my terms of giving it to you one of these days I'll pay you back Sora I swear on it you do every day by being my friend god you are tooth achingly sweet I love you and she will pop Sora's on the on the counter. Sorry, I am just a poor student living off of students' wages, but these are some things we picked up in our travels, and I can't imagine you get too many of these coming through this holy place. I eat the vines that's right next to the primordial plains. We get them every now and then. But I've never gotten no one's ever given them to me. What else you got? I'll take this and something else and we'll cut it even. I've got like a hundred gold. That's it. And Sora I... would offer her hundred gold. No, Sora, put it back. I love you, but wait. <laughs> well, it is one of the options you can consider if there's nothing else. 
100 GP and some of that scale. It's getting sweet, you know, a dwarf likes to dwarf. You think you could forge the scales into a proper scale mill and flip it for some of the expenses of the item. With the 100 GP, it's certainly more appealing. Uh, not to mention it has a very fashionable take from the typical fish scales they use. Uh, so it looks at you and goes, I think I can master work, please. 100 GP, if you've got fitting more, book's yours. She begrudgedly takes out 50 more. She actually had 189 on her, but she was just saying she had 100 because that's what you do. So, yeah, she will give the 150 and Sora can keep hers. Oh, thank you very much. It's going to be real tough parting away with that. But it is what it is. You got a case for it, right? A sleeve, a leather to wrap it up, protect it. Oh, that's why I asked you for the extra fit. Pulls out a glass case and really thin. This will protect it from dust. It's safe. It's not regular glass either. Plastic. It's new. What? People don't know about plastic around here. Found it a long time ago in a hall from the relics. <laughs> it's durable. Looks like glass, but don't break like glass. Interesting. Have you had anybody try to replicate it? It was tough. Anyone who tried would more likely melt it. See, it's subject to fire in a special way, rendering it useless. So I held on to this piece. I figured now is the best time as any. Protect something important to us, you know. Have you tried cold? <laughs> I beat things with a hammer. I'm a man of fire. Perhaps all the opportunity to try cold is all on you. Thank you. You are a doll. I appreciate it so much. I hope you have an amazing day. Two fingers salute. And then she turns around and faces Sora. And you just see absolute joy written all over her face. Like she usually has a dour expression, but this is a rare moment where she's just so excited. And she will try very hard to keep her excitement under control as she walks out the store. I see, that is why material wealth is nothing to me. Getting to see stuff like that, if you just give away all your things, I would do it all the time. And she would follow out. Tupperware. <laughs> um, as Sora catches up, she would look down at it and question it. Um, so, I, it must be a very important book, whatever this is. They're clues. See, most people think it's just entertainment. And she will, like, tuck away to the side of a building where there's not... I mean, people can be passing by, but, like, they're not in danger of being hit by someone walking into them. So kind of to the side, out of the way. And she will open it up and look at the different pages and find one that has a good image of a relic from back in the day on it. These things, they're not from here, but the story goes that they invaded and brave people fought against it. I don't know. It was forever ago, but they say they got rid of all of it, but I'm telling you, they didn't. And these things were smart, and I have so much to learn from them. Like, if I could just find one of them and reverse engineer them, I could make Jenkins something amazing. And the libraries, they hide this information. They say it's dangerous. They don't want people to know about it, but there's clues in here. There's got to be some somewhere still. They can't all be gone. There's... I don't know, you, you you probably think I'm crazy, but God, one of these days I'm gonna get my hands on one of these. Oh, I don't think you're crazy. I think you're very passionate, but is it dangerous to use whatever they had in terms of power and what you call technology to put into Jenkins when they use this to try and kill everyone? It could be, but that's why I gotta get better at my skills. See, like, Jenkins doesn't... Well, 
He didn't used to do things on his own until we got to the college. I've got to figure that out. I, I, there's got to be a short summer, but like he he does pretty much what he's told to do. And the, the things he does that I don't tell him to do, they're just like glitches. Like he doesn't just accidentally kill a friend. Like he doesn't do that. And so like, I think these things were probably under somebody else's control. They weren't working on their own. And if the person that is in control is benevolent and not, not evil, like th there's so much possibility. And I will help you. Just tell me what to do along the way. Well, right now we got to do this thing for the college, but thank you, Sora. I promise I'll make it up to you one of these. I am working on something, but it's, it's I'm having a hard time with it, but I'll get it to you and it'll be good. Do you think, are there any names in there of people maybe we can talk to one day that could, that were there and could point you in the right direction? Maybe. Um, do we have, does Phoenix like clock what time it is? Do they need to get going or is this something they could look at now? Oh, it's starting to get dark, but, um, you probably have, you guys probably have another hour or two before it's probably, you probably want to settle. You got a long trip ahead of you. Sora, and if it's hard to read because it's getting dark, Sora would use her light rune to light up her hair to give a little bit of reading light. She will, um flip through the pages is there any names that ring bells to phoenix as possibly being still alive i mean this was forever ago yeah you look through the pages and there's some interesting names uh people you would assume uh most of the humans might be dead by now you can see like one of the none of the pages shows a guy named malik fighting against the shadows and jumping over owl bears He's probably long and gone by. Now. I mean, there's a chance he's around still, but it's something like if he was still alive. He'd be like 80 something. Maybe no, he'd be even older than that. Honestly. As for other creatures, uh, when you look through the pages, there's one particular thing you think these these are most famous also because they depict other nature among other people, and she's in here. You see her when she's younger. But you wouldn't know off the bat because in this earlier edition, they only had her as a tree. But you would start realizing like that same tree was everywhere in your edition. Why is it everywhere in this edition as well? I, I've seen many of these, but I haven't been able to keep them that long. I only have one other. I need some more to compare and contrast them, but that's a good idea, Sora. You are smarter than people give you credit for. I'm sure there's also someone back at the academy when we return. I'm sure we either witnessed the event or would know maybe um, where we could find it. It's just you gotta be careful who you ask. I've used to ask around and, well, got kicked out of a couple places because this is forbidden knowledge. I will be careful, but I feel like this is not really relevant to them anymore, so it shouldn't be too dangerous, but I shall rely on my charms. And you do have an abundance of those. And she will tuck it away in this weird plastic thing and put it back in her bag and we probably should get going. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you tagged along. Of course. Let us get back to the others. Excellent. And now that we are back to the others, is there anything people would like to do in the city? It has what you'd expect from one of these ten fantasy cities, probably breweries, bakeries, places you can get mundane stuff, blacksmiths, tailors, anything in the you think that you'd want to try to get in the city before we set out, or are you happy and you're going to settle down for the night? Uh, there's one thing I wanted to do. Absolutely, that's it. Um, actually, before I, before I go, I'll ask if Judith wants to come too, just to make sure. Um, so go to uh, Judith real quick. Unless you do yeah, something got, else. No, yeah, I got to pick something up too. All righty. I just wanted to make sure um, she mentioned that she was that she was supposedly from this place. So I want to check out the um, the place she said she was from in the city. 
Okay. Were you doing something else, or...? No, no, no. I just gotta pick something up while we're along the way, but uh, I'm sure I can find, like, a, st a stall or something. I actually was planning on buying a recent issue of Wizards Weekly. Oh, their competition. Why? You gotta read up and see what they're, what they're talking about. You know, I got, gotta stay uh, uh, in the know of all things. Know your enemy? Something like that, yeah. Respect. All right, let's go. So we head on down to the bum, 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 bum. the the Baptist church she said she went to. <laughs> All. So you guys gonna do the comic thing first, or? Uh, uh, sure. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick it up along the way. I'm not gonna read it right now. I'll re I'm gonna read mm -hmm. it. Read it when we get back to the bar or whatever the tavern. Okay. In. Okay, good. So I'll tell the comic thing. Sorry, Emma. What do you? What is your main your priority? Um, yeah, so um, when I was talking to uh, the Nikita clone, or just we'll just say this kid, um, she mentioned that she was um, that she was from the Vine, if I remember correctly. She's from the Vine, and she yep, was from so um, a church here, I believe. So we're gonna go check that out. Oh, awesome, awesome. Was it, awesome. Oh, was it Ophelia or something? I wasn't there, but Church of Ophelia, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ophelia was the first light room. So, yeah, you would eventually arrive at the church, which is called the Ophelia. Because, well, they literally serve Ophelia, so... You go to House Ophelia, and when you get inside, you can see all the priests are... Uh, dressed like... Kind of like monks in that regard, or... They're really, like, cloaked and stuff. But even though they're cloaked, it, the strange part is... Their bodies would normally be hidden by their clothes, but their cloaks are almost completely transparent, exposing more of them than you probably care to see. That's okay, okay, because all is revealed in this place, and our bodies are just an instrument that the world gave to us should also be explored. Hmm, my kind of church. As we walk in, do, does that happen to our clothes, or is it just their robes? No, no, that'd be way too intrusive. It's just the outfits that they've chosen to place on us. Okay. That'd be horrible. You guys walk in there, you butt-ass dick. Fuck, we're naked. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. No, no, the, the uh, house yeah. of light, they're all about transparency, so. All right, we'll find out. I'm going to go look for uh, someone important looking. Yeah, you would see uh, Bishop Oleg is in front of the church, and he's the only one that, see, the cloaks were see through, the only one that decided he wasn't wearing his underwear today, and he's also the head of the church. Interesting. He doesn't follow the tenets. No, okay. um, yeah, we'll, we'll go up to him then. Um, excuse me. Yes, he spins around gracefully. Oh boy, um, we want to speak to you. Um, we we met someone recently who said she was from this uh this denomination of sorts. Did you do? You, did you know of a member named uh, Nikita? Nikita. Hmm. I shall check the books. He spins back around and bends over to pick up the book. Let not thy eyes wander to places unseen, but know they are invited to all realms of me. And to which that effect I shall search these pages. No doubt what you seek is within. There are six Nikitas listed in this book. Do you perhaps have a last name? Do you have uh, an image description of them? Like in the yes, book? Yes, I shall run through the I shall run through the pages as proper. They're not physical descriptions, but we log things like gender, age, race, and for whatever reason, weight. Though I always lie on minds. Oh, Philia, forgive me, Lord of Transparency. And I'd have him know that I'm pushing 400 pounds. With that said, let us speak truth. Sure. Um, female, um, Water Ganassi. Um, about. Oh, it's an I old tongue, Water Ganassi. Nowadays, they're called runeborn, so that is what they would pronounce in primordial proper. Let's look in here. No, the sure. closest thing we have to that is a water aquatic fauna. A beaver girl. Does she look like a beaver? 
no. No. Oh, sorry. It's not a beaver. How foolish of me. A platypus. How about that? Uh, no. Nah, not a... Oh, unfortunately, there's none by that name here. If there was, it would be logged. If everyone who entered this place is logged, should they decide to devote themselves to the church. Sure, and this is for every... I don't know, franchise? I don't know what you guys do. Yes, we have locations in all major cities. We even have monthly sponsorship. Would you like to donate to the church? Uh, perhaps um, another time, Father. Ah, but in the light of the lady, one must not lie. It's okay. It's optional to donate. But those who say what you said never return. Well, I guess they'll find out. <laughs> The troops right. have set you Judith, free. We'll be off. When you're leaving, he tells uh, the both of you. Well, hold on now. Just in case you change your minds. Grabs two cloaks that look about your size. One day you too shall reveal all to this world. Here, take them. Oh, now we're talking. In case you he's had giving, to see through cloaks. He's giving us nude, nude cloaks. <laughs> the nude cloaks. Yeah, they kind of look like, like white rain jackets. Uh, a little bit of hint uh, they're just super transparent though uh oh i just take it like and i pull i'm pulling on amber's arm like okay well thank you very much uh uh bishop Olag. that's that's great we'll see you around yep we'll be sure to shave first don't worry he just smiles does that there's a slow motion nod of his head yes and no, we uh exit out in years he's yep. a weirdo <laughs> So you guys leave the church of the light, but transparency is key. Yeah. Well, this is what I thought. Just curious, though. You think that information was planted in her in her memory? Most likely. But I was just wondering. I don't know. I know she's a clone, but maybe the real Nikita had roots here, or something like that. Maybe, maybe she had a she place had a... that she was from. Maybe there was a different name that she went by back then. Yeah, perhaps. She didn't. She wasn't. She didn't join as a child, like like you. Uh, as far as I knew, she did. Yeah. Hmm. But I don't know. Was I ever a kid? Was she? Well, probably not this form of you right here, but the original form. Yeah, probably. Sure. It's. It's okay, Emerald. I hope you don't mind my my bluntness talking about it when it regards to you. You are still my friend, no matter what body you have. All right. And if the two of you are done, Jude, if you would eventually just grab up the latest issue if you're willing to spare five GP. Oh my God, they're make they must be making a killing. Yeah. How much is the Between the Flames cost? Uh, if it is just a regular speech, it's a GP. But if you want to do like uh, physical illusions, it's five GP. So it's a quarter for a simple message. But if it's a really lengthy, like we're talking, like some people might be trying to write books here, it could get more. A really lengthy message. No, I mean like a like a like a paper, like a news publication. Oh, just uh, the 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 raw news book, not transferring the messages yourself. Yeah, then, oh, you probably like five, ten silver. Oh, Jesus. So yeah, it's it's like times five hundred the cost of your newspaper. Okay. Well, that's some bullshit. But we should mention they also don't provide the other services you guys provide, which is where you guys make most of your money. Yeah. Ooh, they're old news. We're in, we're in the telecommunications. Um, okay. Head back to the... Let me head to the tavern, I guess. Yeah. the inn. And whatever. Mr. Safar is sitting there with Lewis. Lewis, did you do anything else or are you just hanging out with uh, Mr. Safar having a drink? Right now he's pouring up some donkey's ass. Lewis kept it pretty simple. Just went straight to the tavern, ordered some water. He tells you, that's a nice away. shield you got there, Lewis. You picked that up. Hmm. The uh, owner down at the shop decided to give us a couple gifts. 
Yeah. That's true what they said about the owner. Yeah. Seemed like a pretty good guy. Sad what happened to him is life. And then the rest of you kind of bust in and he pulls up another donkey's ass and got our rooms all paid for everyone. We're sleeping here tonight. It's sponsored by the church, so you might see some strange things, but don't worry about it. Just ignore it like I do. We're glossing over that? Okay. <laughs> right now, um, Phoenix is not liking being the height she is. <laughs> I kind of did think of that. <laughs> um, are there any uh, bards in this in this room? Like maybe like an up and comer? Yeah, you would see you always in every tavern. You would see some, some people trying to make their life here. Uh, I would go to see if there's one who looked like they had some talent and maybe uh, uh, a little down their luck. Maybe they're not getting paid. They're not getting tipped well. And I will say, uh, um, "Hey, you're 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 quite you're quite good there. I don't don't hang your head too low." You think so? Yeah, I just I think you gotta play with the right instrument, you know, you gotta find the instrument that is that calling it. Yeah. I think so too. So far I haven't really made much money. I'm early in my day. Say I have the charisma, I just need to have the voice that I lack the voice. No. The voice is not something I usually shy away from, but um here this this if i look at their instrument is it like kind of kind of grubby and needs a lot of needs a lot of work yeah it looks like it's been it's, it's been through a harsh time jesus it's like that i will uh i will on my back i will pull off my loot and the loot is like it's perfectly clean you know, that's it's very well made. It's very has a lot of like embellishment and very hand craftsman like. And I'll say, uh I've had this a long time. Um, but honestly I don't play it too much. And uh who knows, maybe this is the instrument that has been calling for you. Here. You can have it. Oh, it's quite generous of you. I've seen to made uh thirteen silver and Three golds, uh, but this is more expensive than all that. Uh, I guess just take the tips I've gotten so far, if that's any equivalent. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's okay. Um, I, I, I don't want it. And you'll hear the, the name, the name for the, uh, loot is, uh, it's a uh, Komu. Okay. So that's the name of the loot. No worries. I hope she brings you lots of, uh, Lots of uh, great fortune. Okay, here you go. I'll get, give him the loot so I no longer have a loot in my bag and I will head back to the table with the friends. Okay. Thank you very Does much. Does he sound any better, Falcon? Oh, uh, yeah. He, he starts playing it. He's having a good time. There once was a ship that put to sea. The name of the ship was a billy of tea. The winds blew up her boat it down. And he just kind of goes along those motions and he's playing it and people are really getting on with it and grooving. Sometimes an instrument doesn't necessarily make a person, but if they have a faulty equipment, it's really hard to show their true colors. And you could see that within the next span of the hour, he would have made the equivalent of what he had made before throughout the entirety of the day. And he gets really happy. She'd not been two weeks from the shore when down on her right a whale bore. And he would just keep going along those lines. Uh, and he, yeah, he does, he does pretty good. That's great. So for the rest of you, you eventually line up with uh, good old Mr. Far and he gives you proper food. He says, why don't we all escape to our rooms and leave these strange, strange religious people down here to enjoy their own company and bodies, shall we? In fact, sure. I got us a master's room, so if you want to hang out in a more private location, I prefer room service tonight. Now, listen, I'm comfortable with the bodies of most people. 
But this is a bit much. Everywhere I turn, there's something new in my face. And welcome to that, Dad. Um, one thing before we adjourn for the night, Mr. Far, um, me and Phoenix were wondering, was there anyone at the Academy that spent a large amount of time during the events of Metal Rain? Metal Rain? At what, the school? Yeah. Well, I would say probably a little less than half the teacher. Particularly Aether was a pretty important piece. Lord of the anyone, Lady of the House, that is. Anyone who would have been on the very front line? Yes, a gentleman named Ducalin was on the front line pretty often. Jaylis, uh, these are the headmasters. All three of them were actually on the front line in Metal The Galleon should have died by old age, but once he awakened his powers, which he has something called Undine, it preserved him. It's actually reversing his age to an extent he's younger than ever. Are either of them open to talking about it, or is that more of a sensitive topic? They would. Jay's not as much of a conversational type, but he certainly has the experience to back it all up. And he is a great warrior. Though it's a little touchy, the subject of runes, as he doesn't have a rune anymore. Not a proper one. When we're done with this mission and proven our mettle, do you think there might be a way they would be willing to talk to some low-level first years? Headmaster is certainly. You've already engaged multiple of them in the classes, but on a personal level, I'd imagine so. they're fond of teaching the next generation. Jay himself actually struck down Eve Ress. Didn't deliver the final blow, but he was in the fight. That name, that name might not mean something to you. Maybe it does. The world at the time, it was one of the most important names ever. Wasn't it the name of the Mal that we faced? Along Briefly. With Mal? I heard she's captured now. If you had any idea how that woman was, insane that she has submitted anyone, she wouldn't dare. This palm must completely control her in every sense of the word, which only makes palm more dangerous than Everest ever could have been. Thank you for everything, Mr. Fah. Me and Phoenix are going to go over a book we got, but I'm going to be turning in. We'll chalk it up to the spirit of transparency. City love. What's the pool? What's the QRC with Metal Rain? Just like history stuff. I believe we, there's so much we have to know with what we face in a year. If it's true that Eve Ress is part of Metal Rain, and she, she's one of the things we must face, I figured we might as well speak to someone who faced them. Get an insight of how best to prepare. Okay. One more thing about her. We're assuming that we, we agreed upon meeting in, like, his master room just to hang out for a tiny bit. Maybe you didn't, maybe you did. But since you're talking to him, I'm assuming you at the very least are in. He tells you, well... Eve Ress was actually the very first Shadow Rune. One of the reasons why the Shadow Runes get such a bad rep. So yes, I know a lot about her as a Shadow Rune youth. We still Phoenix. have to survive the stigma she put before. Phoenix bites her bottom lip when he talks about Shadow Runes getting a bad rep. Honestly, all the Shadow Runes I've met have been really nice to me, so I don't understand myself. Well, that's because a rune doesn't define you. You're an individual. The powers you're given is yours to use however you see fit. So it should. And one day you may meet someone that's a Shadow Rune user that's vile and evil, but it has little to do with the fact that they were born with these rune powers. Has there ever been, say, a light rune that went vile and evil? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm just asking a question. Oh, I'm very curious too. Well, now that rumor is more common than ever, it's been quite a handful. Have they made a name for themselves? Eve Ress? None have come close. 
I think the most popular was Ziggin the Zeit. You know, he's Ziggin the Zeit. Ziggin the Zeit. Oh, be careful. He's still alive and out there somewhere. He despises the light room. He thinks anyone that has rune powers in general are not worthy of them. He has used his powers to kill others. Would that name would have been in uh, Apollo's uh, library that I've been reading? Zig and the Zeit, yeah. Zig and the Zeit. Yeah, there's, there's evil in all sorts of the imagination. Night. He tells you that uh, he uses his light runes to kill people, and he, he hates light rune especially, and other rune users, especially his own. He uses the power to cleanse the world. He hasn't been seen in Divine for some time, but that's where he was kind of a, not the same nature of what was going on, but he's kind of the Jack the Ripper of the city, where he would go around and just kill anyone with a halo over their head and disappear. To hate oneself so thoroughly, that's just... I feel bad for him. Do as well, though I do hope we capture him one day, or he's dead in a ditch. He dangerous. Oh, yeah. Chance that we'll ever encounter him as slim to none. This is a big world, after all. With that said, I think I'm going to turn in. The ride... Carriage is not that comfortable, so I'm going to make maximum use of my bed here. Well, always nice talking to you, student. I must last ask you to exit the room and hopefully find your own accommodations and sleep. Have a good night, Mr. Lad. You really don't like this robe? No, did you put the robe on? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you didn't go like the chief, though. You at least have your undergarments. <laughs> He, he t that's that's sure. important because it's based on if you don't he's probably gonna tell you to get the hell out if you do then he's just gonna shake his head and be like sure Emmerich, sure which is it average <laughs> like i'm doubling down my eyes oh my god <laughs> he's look at you and Emmerich goes what? please leave you come back when you have proper clothes on Amber. please is this a religious robe okay <laughs> Judith, what do you think about Amber's? I, I am laughing. I've seen Amber naked a couple of times at this point, so I'm just laughing. <laughs> I, I'm a, my eyes, they are bleeding, please. Well, now you're making me feel bad. I'm leaving. Sorry, it's like you're my brother. Whatever. And he goes, there's a. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Parr, make sure he does not watch you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as for Lewis, do you have any thoughts on it? Or are you just shaking your head with Mr. Var? He kind of just like looks for a brief moment, one eyebrow raised, like, what in the hell did they yes. get themselves into? <laughs> and then he just shakes his head as he's uh, starting to leave the room. But he kind of pauses in the middle for a brief moment, looking down at the ground before uh, looking over his shoulder. What? It happened to the shopkeeper. Gail, his wife, or his explorers, let her daughter watch the shop most of the time. Gail just happened to be at one of the burial sites when they awakened. The exact burial sites that your other classmates returned from. His wife was brutally murdered and he was rendered disabled. See, he walks around, but he doesn't actually walk. He floats. He doesn't have much room in his spine anymore. He always liked to explore and always wanted to be an adventurer. Now I'm afraid he's confined to his shop. Rumor says it that he plans to retreat, even from the shop, disappear into the world one day despite his odds of survival in his current condition. So, it surprises me that he gave you those items, but once I gave it any thought, Sounds like he's writing his own death. Time is over. I would hope he would survive for his daughter. We all grieve in different ways. We'll not judge him for his decision. I see. 
And kind of Lewis just looks up at the roof for a brief moment and just takes a deep breath before walking out the room. Uh, Judithal, Judithal had out too after after hearing that like the hilarious laughter that she was able to have uh, dropped completely when she heard the story about uh, about Gail and. Uh, Almost kind of like fighting back a little, fighting back a, a tear or so. Is that what she's doing? You can't see because she's out of the room. You leave, um, he goes to get a sandwich, but been squished. Emmerd had sat in the chair and not noticed that, considering what Emmerd was wearing. This so far. Love my students. Love my students. Fuck! <laughs> nice. He closes the door, goes to sleep. When the door shuts, is there anything else? Wise, we will call it here. I'm just making potions. That's it. I'm done. Yeah, I'm going to work on getting that eye put into Jenkins. Tomorrow sure. would be in the same room as Phoenix, reading through the book they got. Um, uh, Judith is getting an early night's sleep as early as she can, and she's as she's going to bed, she's just going to be thinking about this uh, zig and the zeit as she drifts off to sleep. Excellent. And Lewis, your last moment? Lewis, having heard that story, just kind of lays in his bed for a brief moment, having the bed just like up against the wall and just leans against it for a brief moment. The uh, badger shield just on his arm. He lays and just stares at the wall for a brief moment before uh, looking down at the uh, new shield. The wish is a man that has decided to give up on everything. Uh. Don't worry. I'll be able to uh, do whatever I can to avenge both of us before finally taking it off leaving it against his bed and heading to sleep. And when your eyes close, so does the session. Thank you everybody for watching today. I'm the Q Credits. Out of fear, we kept running, tried to hide away. Can you hear war is coming, beckoning our fate? This is the day that we stand up, this is the day we fight. We'll take our place, we won't give in, our victory is in sight. Only a sword in our hand, but we enter the lion's den. We're not waiting for a war.